Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're joining us from. Welcome to the Within Japan YouTube channel. I am feeling so sick today. Oh my god, I have to get rid of this uh, illness that I have before I go to Sapporo. Oh my god, i got a week to go. Am I going to get better? So I'm on antibiotics and I haven't been sleeping and uh, I'm not very well at all. But uh, we've come on just to show you something quick, do a very quick stream. Uh, because not only am I going to Sapporo uh, for the snow festival, we're inviting all of you, all of you that are watching, yes, you, and even you right down the back there, and see, see you, the one that has never been to the channel before, we're inviting you also to come to Sapporo for Christmas. We would love you all to come to Sapporo for Christmas. Hello, Mad Hatter, how are you? And um, when you come to Sapporo for Christmas... You might like to get a JR Rail Pass, and I hear what you're saying, you're going, the JR Pass is expensive, even though we've told you on the channel a billion times it's uh, it's not expensive. Hello, Russell. Um, you When you go to uh, Hokkaido, you might like to get a JR Rail Pass, and Sapporo J, the friend of ours who lives in Sapporo, in Hokkaido, uh, sent me the link to this, and uh, his argument is the same as mine. It's like, if you find that the JR Rail Pass is expensive, then you absolutely have no clue because we're going to show you um, three passes you can get when visiting the Hokkaido region. So anybody coming at Christmas, or even if you're not, I know like Mad Hatter is going there in the summer. I think this would be wonderful to get one of these passes during the summer. Um, have a look at these. Let's have a look. Let's uh, look at the value of them. And uh, I'm sure you are going to be amazed. So as I uh, change the screen, and uh, yes, you can still hear me. This is uh, wonderful. That's great. I'm just going to enlarge your chat because I'm a blind old man. And uh, I suppose we can, to start with, agree with the settings just to get that out. Is that going to disappear? Get out of the way. Come on. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, so. it it uh, They are four-day passes we're looking at here. Um I think that uh, four-day pass is more than ample for most people that are going to the Hokkaido region to explore it all. Or if you're going longer, you might like to get two passes, right? One pass at the beginning of your trip, one pass sort of like later in the trip to explore the, uh, the region. So uh, let's have a look at them. Unlimited rides, of course, on the JR Pass, so you can travel as much as you like. Now, they don't have... Uh, Shinkansen in uh, Hokkaido, but they are building the Shinkansen to Hokkaido. And the reason why we're highlighting these passes today is when the Shinkansen gets to Hokkaido, all of these lines, they're gone, right? So this is your opportunity to uh, explore the Hokkaido region before, you know what I'm saying? You might go, well, hang on a second, I can go around the place on the Shinkansen. No, you can't. The Shinkansen's not going to go to as many places as what these lines go and certainly doesn't have as many stops as these do. So uh, let's have a look at these passes. I'm sure you will be uh, quite amazed with them and the value of them. And again, thanks to Sapporo J for sending this through to us. Look at this, everybody. When you say the JR Pass is expensive, the price, if you buy it outside of Japan for an adult, uh, 9,000 yen, child 4,500 yen, or uh, 10,000 yen uh, if you buy it in Japan, 5,000 uh, for a child. This is uh, pass number one. And uh, this is the uh, the region you get here. Four-day pass, four-day rail pass can be used on four consecutive days from the starting date that you choose all throughout the year. Uh, this one is uh, kind of like the easiest one, I guess, for uh, you tourists. Because uh, you can see directly in the middle there, uh, the airport. That's where you're going to land when you go to... Uh, Hokkaido um, and to Sapporo as well so uh, the train line from the airport is the train line that you are getting this JR pass for uh, and it covers uh, many 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 different areas uh, Otaru I'm looking forward to going to Otaru on this particular February I'm going to do whatever I can to get uh, down to Otaru, uh, Canal Town down there. There's a train museum I want to go to because I want to uh, film something. You've got Sapporo, of course. And uh, when you look at the prices of this rail pass, as I just come back to me for a second, picture it this way. If you still think it's expensive to get a JR rail pass, when you get to the airport, no matter what airport it is in Japan, you are having to pay a premium price to get from the airport to 
the city anyway. So like from uh, the airport in Sapporo to Sapporo City, you're paying a premium price anyway. So if you get this JR Rail Pass, it includes that train. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, put all of this into uh, consideration as we uh, go along. Uh, you can take the ordinary car, reserve seats and non-reserve seats on the Limited Express, rapid and local trains in the valid area. So there you go. That's uh, pass number one. Going to uh, quite a few places. Again, if you don't want to get lost, if you're a bit unsure of yourself, first time in Japan, this will be ideal for you. Because even though there's a, there's a couple of little branch lines there that uh, you can catch, uh, you are mainly on the, the, the main line, backwards and forwards. Plenty of things to see. May not look like a big area on that map, but that's a, that's a massive distance. That's from one side of the country to the other, right? So you are literally, like, yeah, you're, you're traveling thousands of kilometers on that particular pass so that's pretty good let's go down to uh, pass number two i'm not going into great details with these because simply uh this is the first time i've read it as well and um and 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 i'm not feeling very well he says uh sapporo uh ferrano area pass allows uh, the unlimited ride in the designated area convenient for travel between uh the airport sapporo otaru Ferrano, B I. Oh God, I wish I didn't even start reading them. But you can see if you're going there in the summer, all the flowers are out. Look at that! How spectacular would that be? Four days of uh, unlimited rides going through all the fields, all the flowers, all the beautiful stuff going on there. Uh, your cat is hungry. He's giving you the evil eye. I understand, because when you, uh, you know, I mean, the end of the day, when you think a woman, you think. Of food, because woman prepares food. Ha. No, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. That was a, that was a joke, people. That was a joke. That was me being sick and just trying to bring humour into my life. Oh my god! All the women hate me now. <laughs> yeah. um, this pass, anyway. Um, beautiful flower fields and view of the hills. Yeah, it's a must-visit area in Hokkaido. It will be. Uh, again, uh, sales outside of Japan, ten thousand yen. That's 100 Australian dollars. That's like 80 American. Really good value. Um, children, 5,000 yen. If you buy it in Japan, 11,000 yen and 5,500 yen. Uh, you've got to be a tourist. And uh, that's the other thing as well. Before we look at the map there, uh, I'm just coming back because one of the things that happened when the JR Pass went up uh, last year, everybody was complaining, going, oh, Japan's ripping off the tourists. That's actually not the case. It's cheaper for tourists in Japan than what it is for locals. Uh, if a local was to do four days of travel in these regions or do whatever the normal JR passes would, it would cost them an absolute fortune. If uh, Japan does anything, it, um, it really, 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 really looks after the tourists. It, it makes it uh, really cheap and affordable. Welcome back. Welcome back, Mad Hatter. And uh, Mad Hatter also uh, emailed me today, uh, just coming back. Thank you, Mad Hatter. The Suica card, I, I did sort of like, uh, I knew of this news, uh, but Mad Hatter was kind enough to email me. I didn't mention it on the channel before because I've never had the problem with the Suica card. See, for some reason, everybody wants the, the green Suica card, and there was a limited amount of the green Suica cards. But again all the youtubers were sort of going you can't get a suica card and all the tourists were freaking out but there was the red suica card which was exactly the same as the green suica card it was just it was a red suica card and they never ran out of them they were always readily available they were available at the airport and what i thought was every single person was landing at the airport to get to japan so theory said in my mind whether i was right or wrong that everybody was going to buy their suica card at the airport because you're then getting on the train to go from the airport into the city, you know what I mean? So um, I don't know why they all carried on about the, the green Suica cards when the red ones were readily available. Um, and again, the, the, the green Suica card only affected really Japanese people because the red Suica card was for tourists. Again, they look after tourists. So um, yeah, but anyway, the Suica card is uh, there now. I've got your Suica card from a few. I've got my Suica cards as well. I've got a green one. I've got a red one. Um, but you know, I was thinking about that today as well. Like for example, when I'm in Sapporo, um, I'm not going to use my Suica card at all. Uh, when I was, uh, in uh, Tokyo, for example, uh, just traveling around Tokyo, I never used a Suica card. And the main reason is that I never used my Suica card was 
I wanted to get rid of all those billions of Japanese coins. And even though you might spend, you know, a couple of cents extra on a fare, I mean, just literally a couple of cents, it's not much, um, you know, to pay by cash, it got rid of all those bloody coins. And uh, I don't know what you guys are like with the coins in Japan, but I seem to get an awful lot of them. And it's because every time I go into a shop, and with my eyes and with me fiddling around, I don't want to try be counting out coins. So I always give them a note. There's a note. There's a note. So I always get all these coins back. There's a note. There's the coins. There's a note. There's the coins. So by the end of the day, my belt is like so done up so tight. My pockets are so bulging so much. And my pants are still falling down because I've got so many coins. So I actually do enjoy going to the train station and pumping all these bloody copper coins and silver coins and goldy color coins into the uh, machine to get rid of all these bloody coins. It's nowhere else in the world. If you've never been to Japan before, there's nowhere else in the world that'll fill your pockets up every day with coins. And you, like in Australia, when you get coins, you sort of like go, well, they're not really worth anything. But like when you go back to your hotel in Japan, and again, your brain is thinking, oh, these aren't worth anything. And then you start counting the coins and you go, hang on a second, there's like $50 here because you've got like 500 yen coins and, you know, it's like $5 coins. And it's like, oh, OK. So, yeah, um, it's an excuse uh, to go to a vending machine. Yeah. And the vending machine speak English, it's all pretty easy. So, again, I'm not quite sure why people carried on about um, uh, the speaker cards, really. You know, e e even if they weren't available, even though they were, even if they weren't available, wouldn't have meant nothing as far as I'm concerned anyway. Uh, let's go back to this anyway. We'll have a look at uh, this one again. So this is rail pass number two, four days, four consecutive days. Look at those fields. I said that before when we looked at it, but seriously, look at those fields. Look at the different trains you can go on. How spectacular. You can't tell me that this is not worth the money just for the... The, the view alone, the view is just spectacular. Japan uh, train views are just amazing. So there's the price again. Uh, Four-day rail pass consecutive starting on the chosen date. And you can see this one uh, is expanded a little bit more to the other one. So the other one was the main line, the straight line. Uh, this one uh, gives you uh, quite a lot more. So, uh, you know, you've, you've still got uh, from the airport there uh, out to uh, Otaru. But then if you plan it really well with your hotels and everything, you could do that loop. In the four days, you could do that loop and have a hotel um, at uh, uh, Fukugawa. Did I pronounce that right? I don't know. And then you could have another one at B, another hotel there. And then you could have a, another one at Verono. What a, what a great... I think this is great. I think it's great. Absolutely great. So, uh, um, for that price, it, it, like, look how much of a car... I'm going to be doing this. I am going to be doing... Not on this particular trip, because uh, this particular trip, Mark is buying tech. And because Mark's buying tech, his budget might be a little bit limited. But when I go back to Sapporo, whether it be at Christmas, because we're definitely going at Christmas, or whether it be earlier in the year as well depending on how my finances and that go i'm going to get these passes because again once it, in, in case you don't know once the shinkansen goes through to sapporo these lines they're going they're, they're going they're going out the window this is your opportunity uh i did that in malaysia as well they were replacing the uh malaysian train from penang through to kuala lumpur through to singapore with high speed rail so i made a point in going on the sleeper train before they got rid of it um so you know you really want to uh, explore hokkaido before they get rid of these trains so you would need to go back to the airport uh to use the bus so you would need to go back to the airport to use the pass what do you mean you'd have to go back to the airport to use the pass no no like you could um no because like you you don't have to start the pass from the airport and you don't need to end at the airport you might want to start the pass when you're in Sapporo on the next day you might want to pay for that rail pass from the airport to the city do you know what i mean uh, i was just saying that like uh, for example you uh, russell you said you know you might fly into tokyo sleep the night fly into Sapporo if you're flying into Sapporo you're arriving in Sapporo early in the morning so you could theoretically start your four-day pass in and go, right, I've got my four-day pass starting at the airport and I'm going to, you know, uh, do the tour of Hokkaido. I'm not just going to go to Sapporo and stop there. I'm going to start my four-day trip ending in Sapporo, you know. So you could start at the airport um, and then head on out to uh, 
Fukugawa on day one type thing, as I mentioned, and then um, Fura, Furono, Furono uh, on day two, then out to Otaru, then back to Sapporo. I mean, you can do that. You mean Sapporo uh, main station is included? Yes, that's what I mean. Great value because the uh, Sapporo main station is included. So when you look at the, the rail pass and you look how much it is for a train from the airport to the city anyway, which is roughly about 20 bucks or so, you know, 20, 25 bucks, um, take that off the rail pass value. These are great value tickets. They're great value tickets, indeed. And then the third pass, the Hokkaido rail pass, uh, enjoy traveling around Hokkaido, allowing the unlimited rides uh within the val uh, validity period oh look this one you can get five days seven days or ten days told you i hadn't read this before uh five days seven days or ten days amazing see that uh, train there with the green on the front of it i've been on that train see the one with the yellow i've been on that train as well um there is nothing like uh riding on trains in japan uh that are not shinkansen shinkansen's are designed for express they're designed for no view whatsoever so you don't really get a view on the shinkansen you get little bits of views but you don't really get much views all the other trains are magnificent and when you think of hokkaido as a region i've traveled the train from uh Hakodate to sapporo many times and people go oh why are you doing that it's like three hours three hour train trip and oh aren't you bored and it's like no 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 until you see, well, you, you can see here, and you, when, when you're getting scenery like that out the window, those beautiful colours of the trees and mountains, and it's just stunning. It is absolutely like nothing else on the planet Earth. Uh, I know uh, Mad Hatter's done the trains. Um, it, it just, it, like, honestly, honestly, it's just so, so stunning. So this pass is for five days, seven days days or 10 days uh forgive me if i'm rattling on but i'm feeling very very sick i'm on antibiotics at the moment let's look at the prices here so a five day pass <coughs> is uh twenty thousand yen that's pretty good so that's 200 odd bucks australian um 150 odd american uh or whatever the conversion rate is that's really good value for a five day Pass going all around Hokkaido. We'll look at the map in a minute. Children, uh, 100 bucks. Uh, seven day pass, oh, 26,000 yen, 260 bucks. I'd be going for that one. I'd be doing a seven day. Oh, no. Oh, God, look, I've just seen the 10 day pass. Uh, the 10 day pass, $320. Uh, I would, I would, oh, God, what one would I do? I would do, if I'm doing all of Hokkaido, I'd do the 10 day pass. Absolutely. Check out Japan out. I just started watching it. Check this Japan train out. I just started watching it. I will check that out. All right, let's look at the map. Great value, 10 days. Look at that. Bang. And it's all, oh, there you go. It, do, it doesn't even show you it. Uh, it doesn't even show you the map. It just says all JR Hokkaido lines. That's everything. Uh, special rapid trains, uh, rapid express, uh, everything so you could go to Hakodate uh, you, you go anywhere you go right to the top very very top of Japan oh my god uh, that's just information about reservation of the seed how to purchase it from the machine if you want to buy it in the machine if you don't want to buy it in advance eligibility for use you just need a passport uh, and you can get it from there or you can get it from the uh, JR East train reservations, or you can buy within Japan. I will post the link to this um, in the community tab when we're finished. I will do that. But there you go. Here's a whole map. So this is everywhere you can go with the uh, full thing. You really enjoyed seeing the different scene, uh, the different uh, scenes, yeah, going on the Shinkansen to Hakodate and the train to Sapporo. It's ever changing, isn't it? It's not the same. When people go, well, isn't it the same? It's like, no. Like every 10 minutes, it changes. One minute you're in the mountains, next minute you're by the ocean, next minute you're in snow, next minute you're in dandelion, uh, you know, dandelions. It, it's it's forever changing. It is just amazing. But um, yeah, so the whole Hokkaido uh, system, the four day, seven day, 10 day pass, look where you can go. Oh my God. You can go everywhere, man. Everywhere. It's just, just freaking amazing. 
Then it tells you how to use your pass, yada, 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 yada. Well, uh, what if we click on, can we click on that? See here for station maps. Oh, that's just station maps. That's just going to be, yeah, ticker gate, yada, yada, yada. Sapporo Station. Interesting. Okay. So, anyway, that's all I really wanted to show you today. I'll have a little chat with you for a few minutes anyway before I go. I will post a link to that in the uh, community tab. Um, again, if anybody says that the uh, JRL pass is overpriced and a waste of money, you, you're fooling yourself. You, you've, you, I mean, you've got no clue whatsoever if you think that. It is the most extraordinary value, the JRL pass. Um, I can't ever... I can't ever fault it. Uh, it it's, in, it's impossible to fault. It really is. Um, but you've got, to, you've got to use it. That's a trick. You know, people go, oh, it's not value for money. It's like, well, where did you use it? Oh, I used it from Kyoto to Osaka. And it's like, well, fool you. You know, if you're not using it, fool you. Um, so, yeah. Yes, one moment it's sunny, next it's foggy. Yeah. You buy the 10-day prize of rides, get off at the stations and risk not booking a hotel room. Yeah, I th you know, out there, and, and when you say risk not booking a hotel room, um, nowhere in Japan have I ever worried whether or not I have a booking because you will always get a room in Japan, no, no matter if you're in the most remote area or the biggest city. I mean, look at Osaka as a very good example. You know, when I changed that uh, hotel, um, I had no trouble getting a thing. No, no trouble at all. There's, there's more rooms uh, in Japan, I'm pretty sure, than what there is people and or tourists. Um, and then when you go out to, to regional areas, especially in um, uh, Hokkaido, you know, you've got as many rooms as you like. You're, you're the only tourist there type thing, you know, and uh, there, there's always places. There's always accommodation. So... Um, yeah, I'm going to be definitely using these passes. I did know that you could get a JRL pass for that region, but I never looked into it because I'd only ever gone to Sapporo. Um, it was just when Sapporo J sent me that and I was reading up about the Shinkansen because uh, as Sapporo J was mentioning the other day, the uh, Sapporo station is going through uh, a rebuild at the moment and things are moved, big cameras moved and other stuff are moved because they're preparing for the Shinkansen to get there, which is not going to happen till uh, 2030. It's not going to happen for a few more years yet. Um, but, uh, you know, um, these lines are going to go, which means when they do go, the only way you're going to be able to explore it is literally by a car, you know, uh, in the uh, Hokkaido region. Um, again, false information that a lot of Japan channels say where they say you need a car in Japan. You don't. You really, really don't. Um, Hokkaido is the hardest to get around, but when I say it's the hardest to get around in the extent of they're not Shinkansen trains, they're slower trains, but beautiful scenery, if you know what I mean. But once a Shinkansen goes through... Then, yes, you will need a car in uh, Hokkaido to explore Hokkaido. I mean, the Shinkansen is going to go to the cities and the tourist places Otaru, Sapporo, uh, Hakodate. Um, it's going to a ski town and, you know, a few other places as well. But it's not going to go to, you know, the tip of Hokkaido. It's not going to go to the little country town that only has like 10 people in it. Um, whereas, uh, you know, that's one of the charms with your JRL pass and you can go into these regional areas uh, th that's literally a single little train carriage. You're the only one on it. I've been on a few of them, uh, not in Hokkaido, but other places in Japan. And uh, you sort of think to yourself, how do they afford to keep these things going? And you just go to the most remotest places where there's nobody. It's just, it's just fascinating. Absolutely amazing. Um, so do have a look at those uh, passes when I, uh, I'll post the uh, link while I remember now. I um, I am as sick as a dog, people. Absolutely sick as a dog. Uh, I'm not not very well at all, he says. But um, oh, oh, yeah, I'm on some medication, so hopefully I'll get better. Um, oh, Hokkaido rail passes post. So that's now in the uh, community tab. I'll also post it on the uh, Facebook page a little bit uh, later on if you are watching later and you're thinking about going to Hokkaido uh, Sapporo for Christmas. 
uh, I think it's my sinus, maybe. Um, I, I think that's what it is. But uh, I have, I've had CAT scans and that before. I needed an operation, and the operation just never, never happened because I moved from Perth. Um, so, yeah, like, mm, ooh, it's just, like, really bad, really painful, can't sleep, very nauseous, feel like, feel like I want to chuck up, but I can't. Uh, the head is just hurting everywhere. It's just really, really horrible. And, you know, nasal sprays and that don't work, unfortunately, because of the the whole issue. So um, it flares up every few weeks. It's it's not a it's not like it's hit me now quite unusually. Uh, it hits me all the time, uh, winter and summer. Uh, but every now and again, I get uh, an extreme case of it. And I have the extreme case at the moment. You actually feel like you're, you're having a stroke or a heart attack or a, like so many things. So it's just like, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrid. And I've had zero sleep. So I've been awake now for um, two and a half days and it's kind of like, it sucks. And then you call the doctor in Australia and they just all give you amoxicillin. It's like, dude, amoxicillin is not going to help me. It's like, but anyway, hello, Sam. How are you? I heard a steam train go past before, so I dare say a, stream, a steam train's running somewhere today, and I dare say you went out and saw the steam train. Did you not? I'm guessing. So, um, yeah. It, I, I, and the weather, of course, isn't helping. Hot one day, cold the next. Windy, dry. Uh, it's kind of like all over the place. So, um yeah, I got I got a week to get well. I'm I'm pretty sure I'll be okay in a week, but uh, just yeah, just today I feel really crap. And then, and then her, see her, see this innocent little dog. See her, butter wouldn't melt in her mouth, right? Butter would not melt in Bella's mouth. It's a lie. This one last night, my head's on the pillow. It's going thump 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 with the sinus thing in there. She decides, I want dad's pillow. So she climbs on the pillow and she kind of lays down, which pushes me into the corner of the pillow. And I thought, okay, no worries. I can sort of live with this, sort of. Somewhat uncomfortable, but sort of. But then she goes, no, 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 no. I want the whole pillow, thank you very much. So she started kicking me in the head. She, was, she kept kicking me in the head till, till I took my head off the pillow and she had the whole pillow all night. The whole pillow all night. And I know some of you might say, why didn't you just move her off the pillow? You, you try and move her off the pillow. She's a killer dog. She's not the, the sweet little thing you see there. She runs this house, man. She runs this house. So, she, yeah, she had the pillow all night. Uh, eucalyptus. Oh, yeah, I've got eucalyptus going on. Uh, hot water towel over the head. Yep, got that going on as well. Got the humidifiers uh, going. Got a bit of everything. Um... Uh, as I say, nasal sprays and that don't work. So even the, the, the eucalyptus does a little bit, but but uh, not a great deal because it's actually all smashed up in here and they, they literally do need to operate. Um, no matter what I spray, whatever I breathe, it just doesn't get in there. Uh, it was caused by... Um, I was hit by a car. Actually, I've been hit by a couple of cars in my life. I was hit by a car... When I was 13, I was crossing the road. Uh, we were actually at uh, the optometrist, not for me. Don't say, yeah, you were hit by the car because you were blind. No, no. Um, we were at the optometrist, but for my sister. And my sister wanted something out of her school bag. And my parents said, because my sister was waiting to go in with them, so my parents said, so she doesn't miss out on going in if they call her, can you... Mark, wonderful child of ours, and we love and adore. Can you go over to the car, get the thing out of the school bag? So I did. I went over to the car and got the thing out of the school bag. And then when I was crossing back the road, it was a main road, um, a car went through a red light at high speed. And it hit me, and I flew up on the window screen, and I actually smashed their window. And then they slammed on their brakes, and I fell on the floor, and then they actually ran over me. Go figure. And I had um, uh, no broken bones, nothing, well, apart from in here, but we didn't know that at the time. Uh, after it hit me, I was so in shock and with the adrenaline that I actually stood up and walked off the road. Uh, the next day, I was just covered in bruises and really, really sore. And, um, and uh, yeah, yeah, but that accident 
smashed up all my sinuses and everything in there. And if you don't believe that story, because I, I hear what you're saying, you're going, Mark, what a whole lot of crap. You went up and the car hit you in this. Uh, there's a video on the channel when I was on television. I was on television when I was 13 because I went to school uh, and I had all the bruises being hit by the car and that. And I got in trouble um, because I couldn't do phys ed. Yet I, I was all smashed up by the car. So um, uh, in, in my brother's wisdom, my parents and I didn't even know about it. He rang up Channel 7, the major TV company in, in Australia. They rocked up at our house and it was like, mum and dad's like, oh God, we can't waste their time. God, they'll put us on TV going, you know, time wasters or something. So we had to let them in and they did a TV thing on us. And that, so yeah. Yeah. You have an interesting life. I have a, I have a really interesting life. It's, it's always drama filled, but I wouldn't have it any other way in some ways. You know, you, you say you hate the drama really but like, I know people that have lived in Perth all their life. They've never left Perth. Um, and uh, their life's shit boring. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? A little bit of drama now and again. It, it's, it's bad when it happens. But, you know, when you look back at it, you sort of go, well, that was an adventure, he says. There was no steam train running. Oh, I wonder what I heard then. It sounded like a steam train. Steam trains aren't allowed to run in the summer. I wouldn't exactly call this a summer, Sam. Um, yeah, I've got so many stories, so, so, so many stories, because, um, see, when I was little, uh, f Dad had a job that he used to have to go completely around Australia, constantly go around Australia, go around Australia, and this was at the days when people didn't really travel, so when we flew, we flew luxury, because air travel back then was really expensive, um, and we were flying from, like, Hotel to hotel to hotel. To, and, and mum and dad said, this is not really a good life uh, for, um, you know, school children. So they bought uh, and had custom fitted out a 27-foot Windsor caravan. If you know Windsor caravans, they're like beautiful deluxe caravans. Um, and we just constantly travelled the whole country. So I've seen everywhere in Australia, man, that you could imagine apart from Tasmania. Uh, you know, little ghost towns to big cities to whatever. And, of course, by travelling so much, a lot of drama and stories and things happen along the way. It's been interesting life. Um, uh, second car hit. The second car hit was, was my fault. Um, I don't know if it hit me or I hit it. Uh, I was coming up to um, a intersection. The car stopped in my way. I had a green light. I thought that he would move and he didn't. So... I smashed into his car and flew off my bike. Um, another time I was hit by a car when I was riding on Epson Avenue in Perth and a car at high speed again went through a stop sign and completely knocked me off my bike, uh, destroying the bike completely. That's how hard he hit me. Um, I think there's another time as well that I can't remember. There's been a, f a few times. A few times. They might be testing the train. Yeah, they might be. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all I can say is um, when a car hits you, it, it it really hurts. I nearly got killed by a bus in Hong Kong. Was it Hong Kong? Yeah, in Hong Kong. I nearly got killed by a bus in Hong Kong. That was an interesting one. That one really rattled me, I tell you, because um, I'd never seen markings on a road. And they have the markings on the road in Hong Kong at the pedestrian crossings where you cross. And they had arrows like literally, you know, as you step off the footpath onto the road, they had arrows. And um, the arrow was pointing that way. So I thought that meant that's the direction you have to look to see any traffic that's coming, right? Because the arrow was not for the cars. It was for the pedestrians. And, it, you know, it was pointing that way. So I looked that way and I went to step out on the road. And for some reason, I stopped mid-step, like literally mid-step. And this double-decker bus, like literally, like if I would have been a millimetre more, that double-decker bus would have just wiped me out completely. The arrow meant the direction it was, it was, it, it, it was travelling, not for you to look that way. But see, I'd never seen markings on a road like that before. So I thought, well, the arrow is obviously telling me what to do. The arrow saying, look that way. But yeah, so there you go. Uh, you think I'm near the upfield line? No, I've got no idea, Sammy. It could be. Could be. Don't know. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully I won't be hit by any more cars. It does hurt. Uh, here in Melbourne, you've got to be really careful. So many cars go through red lights. Even uh, yesterday when I went down the road, you know, a car went through the, the red light down here. Um, cars pass the stationary trams. It's, you know, pretty dangerous. But uh, I don't go out that much, he says, in, in uh, Melbourne, as you know. So uh, I don't feel that, uh, that worried now because I don't go out that much. I go out and buy my shopping. That's about it, really. Um, there will be some changes when I come back though again I, I've got to figure out what to do the, the housemate he's going to be uh, leaving when I get back because he can't stand Melbourne anymore um, so yeah I'll have to look at that sort of thing as well I don't know figure it out I don't know he says uh, any conversation say whatever you want to say uh, while I have a bit of spirit and life in me um, I've shown you what I wanted to show you that was the Hokkaido uh, rail passes I think they're really good value I, I like even the Shinkansen at the price that is now or it's not even the Shinkansen why do people keep saying the Shinkansen I'm even doing it now even the normal JR passes at the prices they are now I still think they're super value super duper 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 value absolutely super um, the train is closed on lines near Clifton Hill Dylan is here How's it going? I just popped in. Good. We just had a look at the uh, rail passes for Hokkaido, Dylan. So that that was it. it. Only took like five minutes, and then I thought I'd just have a chat. So how are you, man? You doing good? Um, I've been looking at Hard Off um, before I get to Japan because Hard Off's got a website with all their stock on it, and uh, Moxra and I were looking at some of the stuff that they sell in Hard Off in Sapporo. Uh, and I have to, I have to stay away from there. Let me just put it this way: I have to stay away from there. So if you can all uh, ensure that I don't go to Hard Off in Sapporo, that would really, really help. Because oh my God, we found so many things that I want to buy there. Thirty-one dollars uh, per day for ten days is cheap. It's ridiculously cheap. It, uh, you know, uh, uh, and what you're exploring and what you're seeing and and it's it's just frigging amazing. Nowhere else in the world could you do that for that price at all. Uh, you're talking about the new one day pass. No, we were talking about, uh, we were showing it. I don't know if I've still got it here. I might have closed it. Let me see if I've got it. I do. Let me just move the chat. Bum, 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 bum. Let me, uh, let me open it again first. We were just looking at the, uh, the regular JR passes. Sapporo J sent me it because, as you know, we've been saying always that the JR pass is terrific value and people say, oh, no, it's not. But uh, we've got people going up there at Christmas, see? Ray, we'd like you to join us at Christmas. And, uh, you know, one of the options is with the uh, JR rail pass. So uh, the ones uh, we were looking at was like to start with like the four-day pass. You just emailed your school to see if any updates so far waiting on a reply. Uh, you should not get a hard off in Sapporo. I think I think you should have a hard off in Japan every day. Um, they came fully updated. Oh, no, that's excellent, Dylan. That's great. That's great. So the four-day pass, uh, look at that, 9,000 yen. Bargain, bargain, bargain. And again, like, look where that map is. I know... Mad Hatter and Russell's already seen this, but you guys have just joined us. Like, it's on the line from the airport. So, you know, rather than paying for the airport ticket, from the airport to Sapporo, which is a premium price anyway, get the four-day pass. Boom, go for it. Do you know what I mean? Great value. Great, great, great value. We'll just flick through these really quick. If you want to see them fully, we had a look at them before. Uh, another four-day pass there through the field, through the mountains. Oh, my God, beautiful. 100 bucks, 100 Australian dollars. That's 80-ish American. Bargain, bargain, bargain. Look what you can do. Picture that for a four-day trip, starting at the airport and then staying at, uh, you know, hotels all around Hokkaido. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then the last one was a five, seven, and 10-day pass in Hokkaido. Um, beautiful countryside, just sensational countryside. And there the, uh, the price is there for the five-day, seven-day, 10-day pass. Really, really great value. And that covers all of Hokkaido. And if you're wondering what all of Hokkaido looks like, which we discovered, the map of it is uh, down here. You know, you, you're certainly getting out and seeing it. And you want to do this before they get rid of 
all these lines because uh, these lines are going once the Shinkan Sen goes through. That's the thing. So, you know, see Hokkaido. Um, bum, 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 bum. You might release your Shinkan Sen video tomorrow night. Oh, Sam, I've been wondering when your next one will be. Just need to do a voiceover. Okay, good. I've been doing voice. I did a. I did a video, a, vo a voiceover video yesterday using, using artificial insemination. No, that was a joke. That was said by Cliff Richard. Uh, artificial intelligence, he said. So I did a video yesterday, which you'll have to wait to see uh, on the 23rd of this month when we do our first stream, uh, potentially do our first stream from Sapporo. I say potentially for a couple of reasons. If I'm feeling better and I actually go, which I'm pretty sure I will be, or number two, if I get there and I'm too tired to do the stream on the 23rd, we'll do it on the 24th. There is a new pass called the Kaiyun Pass. Uh, any number of Shinkansens in Tohoku area for just uh, 10,000 yen. Wow, not sure if it's open to tourists right now. Interesting. Um, I think the JR Rail Pass for tourists, though, is uh, a lot cheaper than that, Ray. That must be for locals, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, that must be for locals. That, that, uh, that would have to be for locals, I reckon. I am flying out on the 23rd. And I arrive on the 23rd. First time ever I've taken off and landed on the same day in Japan. First time ever. It's going to be a unique novel experience. And uh, once I land, uh, I go uh, to the city. Uh, and then from the city, I go to my accommodation and I drop off my bags. And then after I drop off my bags, I go directly to big, 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 big camera and pick up my glasses. And there's a new version of the glasses coming out. Yay! But I'm not getting them because they're double the price. But they just announced them. The new version of those glasses I'm getting um, are, are actually full... Um, uh, uh, what's it called? AI or whatever wh whatever it's called. Where you can actually move stuff with your fingers. Like this. And move them around. And you can set up like every room of your house or whatever. And the glasses remember it. So if you've set up your computer in one room and your cinema in another and something in the other, it'll all remember it. It'll all be there. Interesting. Then hard off. Uh, no. No. Super soon then, yes. Um, the good thing about hard off in Sapporo is, just like Big Camera, is the... Uh, the area we stay in, the area which all of you guys would stay in, the area that all the tourist stuff in is like here. Big Camera is here, right? So it's already an effort to get to Big Camera, which is good. Big Camera's not in the, in the area that I'm going to be staying in, so that's good. I have to actually make the effort in minus 10 degrees to go down there. Uh-huh. But big, 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 big camera is... So you're here in the tourist thing. You've got to go up. You know the river? that I did the drone and the live stream from, you've got to cross that river, and then you've got to go like all the way out to the, outer, like it's, it's a long way. It's a awfully long way. It is a, it is a commitment to go to a uh, hard off in Sapporo. It is an absolute commitment. And, um, and, and it's really hard to do that commitment when there's so much other stuff to do. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I want to go out to big camera. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> so, yeah, so Sapporo is the safest place for me to be. I know they have Don Quixote there, um, but uh, that's really the only temptation thing in the area I kind of stay at, Don Quixote. Um, even Daiso is a little bit sort of like out of the way. You had the sickness I had on Christmas Eve when I was in Japan. It's killing me, Sam. It's just like, it's. I feel awful. Yeah, great value for the residents. Yeah, absolutely, Ray. We were saying that before, you know, the tourists complain and they go, oh, you know, the, the JRL pass is too expensive and Japan is ripping us off. No, 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 no. We got it so cheap. As, as tourists, we have it so cheap in Japan compared to the locals. Most countries you go to, it's the other way around. Tourists pay the premium price. But in Japan, it's the other way around. Tourists have it cheaper and the locals have it much, 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 much more expensive. So, um, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, it's good value for you guys, uh, but for us, it's it's kind of not. He says. I don't know whether I have my glasses on or my glasses off. I'm feeling nauseous. I'm feeling horrible. <laughs> the tennis starts tonight. The Australian Open starts tonight. Uh, I'm gonna feel sick. I'm gonna you, I'm gonna sit down and watch it because I haven't slept. For a couple of days, I'm going to sit down and watch the tennis, and I'm going to fall asleep, I know it, and I'm going to miss it, and oh my god. Uh, that was the day you were going to the train museum. I'm, I'm hoping to go to the train museum out in Otaru. Uh, I've never been out there before, Canal Town. Um, I'll see how I go. I always say I'm going to go do things, and I just never end up doing them, because I end up doing other stuff. That's what happens. That's Japan. But, um, yeah... And then my big suitcase, I've lost my big suitcase. I, I don't normally travel with a big suitcase, but uh, this time around I got to travel with a big suitcase. And do you think it is anywhere on this property? No. I don't know if I gave it to Victor. I don't know if I threw it away, thinking that I would never need it again. I don't know what I've done with it, but I have no big suitcase. So I might have to take two little suitcases and a backpack, which is a bit of a pain. But... I'm not traveling around the country this time. I'm literally just staying at two different hotels. One for all of my trip, apart from the last day. The last day, they were fully booked out, so I, I have to change on the very last day. Have you been to the enormous, most point of Japan at Cape Soya? No. That's why I was interested in these rail passes when Sapporo J sent them to me. Every time I go to Sapporo, apart from last year, last year we were in Sapporo in the summer for just one day, but when I'm in Sapporo, I'm always there this time of year in the winter, and I don't really want to go up there in the winter. I know you can, I don't want to. Uh, you know, I do like the idea of being in Sapporo and going, it's cold, I'm going in a shop. It's cold, I'm going downstairs. It's cold, I'm going to my hotel room. Do you know what I mean? Um, but uh, I, I, I'm hoping to do Hokkaido in a summer. I don't know which summer, but in a summer and do all of Hokkaido, um, especially before the Shinkansen starts. Because again, once the Shinkansen starts, these lines, these little country lines that you see, they're going. They're going, they're gone. So make sure you do before them. Hello, Chris. Um, when the Shinkansen reaches Sapporo, why would they discontinue those other train routes? Wouldn't that hurt tourism to the other locations? That's the point. There's no tourism uh, outside of where the Shinkansen is going to go. So the Shinkansen uh, from Hokkaido is actually not going in a straight line to Sapporo. And normally the Shinkansen would go in a pretty much straight line, if you know what I mean. Uh, Tokyo, Sendai, Sendai, you know what I mean? But it's actually curving around. So it's going to like the ski resorts where all the tourists go. Uh, it's going to a couple of other locations I've forgotten where. It's going to Otaru and then it's curving around into Sapporo, right? So it's, it's, um, it's doing the tourist areas. Where the local trains go now... Um, their uh, tourists don't go. Tourists don't go to the, you know, the top that Ray was saying, you know, the, the northernmost point of Japan, Cape Soya. You might get one or two people, but that's it. Um, and because it's an aging population and, uh, you know, all the young people have moved out of these country towns now, it's just not feasible to run these trains anymore. And even the trains that, you know, the single carriage trains that might only carry one person or something, that is now not feasible. It's costing them a small fortune to run it because one person on a train, running a train, uh, you know, with diesel and maintenance and track and all this, it's, it's a very, very, very expensive thing. So they've had to bite the bullet and they've said, look, we'll keep it going until the Shinkansen comes through. Then after that, we're going to get rid of them because we just can't afford to have them. There will no doubt be, a, you know, they'll replace them with buses or something from Sapporo, I dare say, I dare say that's what's going to happen, but the actual train thing will go, and I, I've never liked exploring with the buses in any country, I find it very confusing and slow and not as enjoyable and yada, 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 but, but you know, a lot of these towns that the trains in Upper Hokkaido go to, you know, they, there's nobody there now, there's like nobody there, so, you know, that's, that's the reason why, that's the reason why. Uh, you know, in the future, 
100 years from now when there's another city up there or whatever, you know, uh, I dare say they will extend the Shinkansen, but that's what their plan is. Um, and of course, it's not feasible with such small tourists up there because um, the, the, the only tourist thing they have up there is the Sapporo Snow Festival. They have lots of other festivals. At Christmas when we go, um, you know, they've got uh, the German festival up there. They've got beer festival, all sorts of stuff. But tourists don't go up there. They only go up there for the Sapporo Snow Festival. So even when the Shinkansen comes through, they're going to get rid of the Hakodate train because it's just pointless having it. It's pointless. So, you know. You were so sick in the before you were going back to the hotel after the fireworks while on the train over Rainbow Bridge. Oh, yeah, I feel sick as Sam. I feel my, my head wants to explode. My eyes want to pop out of my head. I want to chuck up. It, I just feel really crap. In fact, I'm going to sit down. You're going to do the driving Hokkaido trip soon. See, I can't get an international license. I can't drive overseas with my eyes. Really should do some research to see if you could get a job in Hokkaido. That'd be nice. If, if you all want to, uh, if you all want to get me a job in Hokkaido where I can live there forever, uh, all you have to do is, uh, all of you, if you can commit, say, $500 each to buying me fake subscribers and views, um, uh, you know, I need at least 10,000 subscribers. That's the magic number for companies to give you stuff. I found out 10,000 subscribers. If you all want to fork out 500 bucks, don't have to give it to me. You can buy it online. It can be a surprise. I wake up in the morning, all of a sudden, I'll have all these subscribers, all these views. Uh, if you want to do that, then I'll be able to go into uh, the Hokkaido uh, Council. In fact, I know an English-speaking person there, and I can say, there you go. I will become the, the man of Hokkaido with my fake views. That's what I'll do. So, yeah, if you can all, like, you'll have to pick the videos that are all showing on the channel. Each one of them will need, like, lots and lots of views. So, you know, if... If, you know, you can talk amongst yourself and you can do like 20 videos here and somebody else can do 20 videos and 20 and, and build up those fake numbers, not a problem. <laughs> it, it will be replaced by a bus. I think that's what's going to happen, but it'll be a very, it might be a more frequent service because it's a bus. I don't know, but um, but it'll be, yeah, it'll be different. It, it, it won't go to towns that are, are, are now you know non-existent with the population then they're not going to run a bus to a town that's only got like five people in it whereas a train did go to the town that only had five people in it but yeah i take trains rather than avoid buses the, the only place in japan i've kind of been forced to do buses was uh three times sendai sendai doesn't have the most wonderful rail system there it's got a good public transport system, but it's a bus system. It's very complicated, very confusing. Um, so I I didn't get lost using the buses in Sendai, but it was confusing figuring out which bus to catch and where it goes and what to do. So that was a bit tricky. Luckily, a Japanese local helped me. She took me, she explained to me the time table. She explained to me how the bus numbers work. Um, and she actually took me to the, 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 the bus I needed. So I caught a bus there. Uh, I had to catch a bus to Mount Fuji. That was pretty easy because it was a, a tour coach type thing. Uh, left from Shinjuku. Went there direct. Uh, I caught a bus to the Maglev. Uh, I never got lost. That was quite an experience because the bus drops you off and you're in the, you're in the middle of nowhere on a freeway. He just stops the bus and he goes, there you go. That's your stop. And I go, what do you mean it's my stop? There's no city here. There's no buildings here. There's no houses here. There's no 7-Eleven here. But there's bears here. And you're dropping me here? Like, how am I going to get back? Like, what? And sure enough, he dropped me off. And um, there's, this, there's this dirt track. It's not even paved. It's not even a paved track. And uh, he just sort of like said, you know, follow the path. You'll be fine. Follow the path. And the path goes up and it goes underneath the freeway uh, and then it's kind of like zigzags around and then there is a little i wouldn't call it a town but there's a few little houses that zigzags around that and you really think you're lost you're going oh my god i'm like the bus driver obviously never understood he, he didn't understand he's dropped me in the middle of nowhere how the hell am i going to get home i don't know when the buses are running i don't know where they're running from i've got no idea but no it was that's where the maglev is so if you want to go to the maglev in japan well worth it well worth a trip to go see the maglev go do it but um don't be don't be scared where they drop you off it's in the middle of nowhere absolutely in the middle of nowhere but worth it um where else do i catch a bus 
uh, I, I caught a bus in Sapporo to the uh, historical village of Hokkaido. I did get lost on that bus. I got lost on the bus big time. So I ended up just walking. I ended up walking like five kilometers. And I knew it was going to be five kilometers, but I thought I'm not risking another bus. Let you be my navigator. If it's a train, no worries. Name all the subs Bella. That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The Maglev Test Center. That's it. And uh, Yamanashi. I hope I pronounced that correct. Yes. Yes. In the middle of nowhere. It was. And then when you come back, you got to like... There's a bus stop there, but like nobody gets off at the bus stop. So it looks like it's something out of a Stephen King movie, right? Uh, not vandalized, not graffiti, perfectly fine. It's never been used ever since it was built in the God knows what year. So it's got that, you know, aged look about it. Um, and you're standing there just hoping a bus comes along. And sure enough, it did. It's the Tokyo to Osaka Maglev going to a section of test track. The test track is the main line, Sam. Uh, the, the test track is part of what is going to be the main line. Um, yep, so so that, that that that's actually main line. And do you know it runs uh, 24 hours a day? The, the test track runs 24 hours a day, in case you never knew. So they've been testing it now for 20 years or 30 years or something, nonstop. Gets to the end, turns around, comes back. Gets to the end, turns around, comes back. Turns around, comes around, comes back. And the reason why they've done that is um, they have wanted to test it with every possible case scenario. Uh, so over that 30 years or whatever, the track's been running, 20 years, 30 years, um, the maglevs have been in earthquakes, they've been in torrential storms, they've been in floods, they've been in heat, they've been in everything. And it, it runs non-stop, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. It's really interesting. That's why I took a taxi there from a nearby station. Is there a nearby station? Oh, there must be, because I went past there on the Shinkansen. Yeah, and I, I looked out the window as the Shinkansen was going that way, and it was like, oh, there's a test track. Where's the local station from there? I think, that, I, th I think actually the bus was easier than the train and a taxi. Italy are driving to her. Oh my God, as long as we go and see uh, Jesus. <laughs> you had to walk 30 minutes back to the station, yeah. I think there is only one track. No, there's two tracks. No, 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 there's there's two tracks out there plus a, plus a depot. Um, yes, yeah, so multiple, multiple tracks out there um, because it is part of the, it is part of the main line. Which there is a website, I can't remember what it is at the moment, but you can see the progress of the building of the maglev. And uh, it's when I say it's nearly complete, well, it is nearly complete, apart from some really serious tunneling. And the tunneling, of course, takes an awfully long time because I think, I think 87% or 89% of something of the maglev line will be in tunnels, it will be in tunnels. Oh, yes, Jesus is on my list. I always thought I was Jesus when I grew up. I, I really did. And I thought, wow, people worship me every weekend. And the reason why I thought I was Jesus was every day I would hear my mum go, Oh, Jesus Christ, Mark! And anyway. Yes. So if you're looking for him, I'm here. He says, God, I talk some crap sometimes, don't I? God. Um. Yeah, the maglev. Uh, the maglev. Yeah, hard to believe. The very first maglev in Japan was like sixty, seventy odd years ago, or something. Uh, like, yeah, the maglev in Japan is completely different to the Chinese maglev as well. I, I don't know. I don't know how it's exactly going to work because what you may not know about the Japanese maglev is it needs water squirted at it. So the whole line, um, when it opens, only part of the line is going to open to start with from Tokyo to to Nagoya. I don't know, to, uh, Tokyo to, where's it going to? Um, it's not going all the way to Osaka, right? That's going to take, God, I won't be alive by the time they finish that. But the whole line has to have water squirted on it. Water. 
I don't know why Greta Thunberg or whatever her name is isn't there going, oh, blah, 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 you can't do this. It's what, I don't know where they're getting the water from. I don't know if, it, if they're going to be able to recycle the water. I, I don't know what they're doing. But that whole line, um, that whole line has to have water squirting on it. So very, very different technology to the Chinese maglev. Uh, on the Chuo line, Otsuki Station from Tokyo. Is it really? There we go. I'll have to play my denture to go and find that station. Let's see us turn water into wine. I, I can do it the other way around. Already I know I can turn wine into water because after I finished my bottle of wine the other day, I went to the toilet and it came out as water. So, again, that, that proves somewhat that I could be Jesus. Wine into water. Look, it went in red. It came, yeah, you know. Anyway. Uh, yeah, take care of Nagoya is the first phase. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, yeah, so think double line, spewing out water. It, it squirts out water like on a sprinkler system. Uh, think how much water that's going to use. Interesting. Greta says that, but she flies on a plane. Isn't it funny that all the environmentalists are never around when there's storms or floods? Or you know, Like we've had a lot of floods in Australia recently. You don't see them there going, the, the planet is getting hotter, which it is getting hotter. There is no doubt it's getting hotter, but we're still in the ice age that killed the dinosaurs, in case you never knew. And I only learned about that a few uh, weeks ago when I was um, watching like, Professor Brian Cox and that all talking about it. We're actually still in the ice age, so of course it's going to get hotter. Brett, I haven't seen you for a while. Brett, how are you? You you got to go on the very first maglev test back in 1985. I am extremely jealous of you, Brett. Oh my God, what was it like? Oh wow, how did you get on that? Did you you entered the lottery? I've been on the the simulator there because at the maglev test track they have a uh, simulator which is pretty cool so you feel it when the wheels are down on the track you know you, you, it's actually like it's actually quite bouncy uh in the simulator anyway you know it feels like um an airplane going down a runway that sort of bounce you know what i mean maybe a little bit rougher maybe just a little bit rougher and then when it hits the 100 k's i think it is and the wheels come up you just go from <laughs> floating but it's got a bit of a weird kind of noise happening well the simulator did i don't know how true the simulator is to the actual real maglev is but very very interesting um and uh yeah really interesting uh otsuki to kanzai station is there really okay i never knew that sam interesting is it? i believe tickets are through the lottery yeah yeah that's what i was led to believe as well i don't think they've had the lottery for a long period of time though um yeah register and win the lottery yeah um it's going to be interesting the cost to go on a maglev it's not going to be for tourists you know, the Shinkansen, that's what the Shinkansen's for. And, you know, the, the Shinkansen is perfectly suitable and fine for Japan. Um, remember, they're only building the maglev, yeah, because it'll be a little bit faster for business, but mainly because the tourists have clogged up the Osaka to Tokyo um, Shinkansen, and it's causing a problem. The, the, the loadings and capacities is causing a, a huge problem. Again, once you travel away from Osaka and Tokyo on the Shinkansen, it's, it's a completely different world. It's a completely different world. So the maglev, when it starts, it's going to be business travelers. I, I can't see them letting tourists on it at all. I can see them allowing very rich tourists on it that somehow manage to pay the exorbitant price because it is going to be ridiculously expensive. Um, but they're just going to say to the tourists, or they're going to say to the Japanese, there you go, you don't need to be pissed off at the tourists anymore, ruining the Shinkansen system. You have the maglev, the, the steerage, they have the Shinkansen. That's what's going to happen, I think. Uh, one hour and 46 from Tokyo to Kanso Station. That, that's so quick when you consider that it pretty much takes that time to catch a train. <laughs> In Melbourne from from anywhere to anywhere uh, 
Um, yeah, I've, I've watched a few people that have gone on there, and I watched one of the Top Gear guys was on it recently. James May was on it recently, and he got the whole train to himself, and they stopped the maglev for him. They stopped the maglev on uh, on a bend, um, and then he showed... He was showing what it was like when the maglev is running and it's on a bend. And of course, you don't really notice. It's fine. You can walk around and do everything. But then they, they stopped the maglev for him on a bend, right? And um, he, he literally couldn't stand up. The, the, the train was on such a tilt that he literally could not stand up. Because see, when you're going a certain speed, even though it's tilting, you've got all sorts of scientific stuff you know, coming into force and playing into force, which means you can walk around the train, you're absolutely fine. But if the train was to stop, say, on an earthquake, on a bend, you know, it's... it's. He was having fun, of course. He was going, oh, my God, you know, I can't even get on my seat type thing. Um, but, yeah, really interesting it was. Uh, uh, Tom Scott went on it. Uh, I think they stopped on a bend for Tom Scott as well, didn't they? I think that's what happened. Might have been Tom Scott I was thinking about. Who was I thinking about? Tourists and others who go in the grand class. Oh, my God, I'd love to go in the grand class. It was a test track. Was it really? Was it? Uh, now, I know when you went on it, it was a different sort of maglev to what's running today. Would that have been the maglev that's now in the Nagoya Railway Museum? So, in other words, it still had that pointy front. Because Japan, when you go to the maglev test center, they show you all the different maglevs that they've had. There's been shitloads of them. But it's only been two classes of the maglev, if I remember correctly, that had that sort of tapered front thing going on. Um, was that the one you, you went on? Tom Scott, yeah, yeah. Tom Scott's a really nice guy. Tom Scott's uh, had a chat with me a few times because I, um, I spoke with Tom Scott about... Uh, YouTube and uh, why I don't get views and what people say about thumbnails and algorithms and hashtags and all this sort of stuff. Um, and Tom Scott had uh, sent me a couple of emails, had a good uh, talk with me as well about it. So, yeah. Nagoya was so good. and Yeah. Well, this uh, train museum I want to go to in Hokkaido, I've never been there before. I think that'll be good as well. I think it'll be small. But I'm led to believe a steam train runs in the snow up there in the museum, which would be really nice, apparently. I don't know if it's going to be open or not. But I have to go there anyway because um, I, 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 I have to film something with my AI. I don't know how this AI thing is going to go, but we're going to try. Um, I did the, as I say, I did a video yesterday uh, with the AI. Oh, I did the script yesterday for an AI video. Um, and it, it was, I had to read off a teleprompter. So with my eyes, that was a bit, that was a bit sucky, I have to say. Um, and, uh, some of the words I've never, or I don't use in general conversation. I could see the point in it though, cause it doesn't dribble on like I dribble on. It was like, duh, 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 duh. You know, it's like, you've said everything you need to say in one paragraph rather than a four-hour stream. So, yeah. So, yeah. But, um, you never liked Tom Scott, but uh, didn't he just retire from YouTube? Yeah, he's kind of retired from YouTube. His kind of videos never appealed to me. No, Tom Scott was more for the, the geeky kind of you know, uh, nerdy, science, science-y type, you, you know what I mean? Um, I, I, I didn't mind him because in, in a way it felt like, like, for example, I could see Tom Scott being a modern Mythbuster, if you remember that, that show, The Mythbusters, um, which I only learned recently was actually written and produced in Australia, in case you never knew. Um, so, yeah, I could see like someone like Tom Scott could, could do a modern um, Mythbusters. Um, he's, he, he's more educational than entertaining, if that makes sense. Like, when I go to bed, I put on YouTube, and it's not to pay great attention to it. I just put on YouTube. Um, 
but like if you put on Tom Scott, you're having a uh, an educational lesson. It's like something you would play at school or something rather. I don't mind his videos, um, but but it's a different sort. Of, it's an old school style. I think he did a, a video once where he discussed it, uh, and he said that he 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 was more like TV than YouTube because of uh, and British TV in particular. So yeah. They had a lot of shows in the UK that was very like Tom Scott. They had uh, the, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, God, what is it called? Um, oh my God, I can't remember it now. Anyway, they had a few shows basically that had Tom Scott on it. And then in Australia, we had like Beyond 2000 and shows like that. jrpass.com forward slash blog forward slash stream. Oh, Steam Train Link. Right, thank you, Sam. There's a possibility that they will show off the maglev at the Osaka Expo next year. Hopefully. But they haven't finished... Uh, they've, they've nearly finished all of the track apart from some tunneling in one of the prefectures because one of the prefectures has really dug in and said, you ain't going to do this. And it's really delaying the, pro uh, the, the process. In fact, Japan at one stage was thinking about canning it. Now, Sam, we, we can't afford the cost of this anymore it's getting way 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 too expensive uh but this one prefecture is is really delaying it would have been well and truly running by now if this one prefecture wasn't being a pain in the ass yeah 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 um yeah but see in the uk uh with bbc people are really into the bbc because they everybody has to pay for tv in the uk you have to pay for a tv license um and their education system uses a lot of that TV, you know, the sciencey stuff and that. So because they use it every day, because they see it every day, it's part of their psyche now. So even when they watch it in entertainment ways, uh, it's a format that they relate to. Uh, um, Blue Peter, that was a show I was thinking of. Um, uh, if you ever are on YouTube and that, it's a really old show. Have a look at it though. Just watch it for a couple of minutes and you'll say, oh my God, that's Tom Scott. And it was a children's show called uh, Blue Peter. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just that weird sort of BBC format that he's done. But he did say that that's what he was doing. He didn't think it would work on YouTube, but it did. And then he says he was kind of successful with it because... Nobody else did it because the YouTube generation is mainly Americans um, and it's a different format and you know what I mean? So he just found that niche, you could say. Yeah. Shizuka, uh, Shizuka, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, prefecture is the uh, culprit. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, yeah, I, I didn't think there would be that much drama with it, really. I thought it all would have been signed off before they started building it. Um, I think, in hindsight, they're going to, like, now that they, they're, they're building one line, you know, 100 years from now, there'll be many maglev lines. And I think they're going to re-evaluate how they build them. I think they're not going to tunnel as much. Because I think it was eighty, as I say, eighty-seven, eighty-eight, eighty, ninety percent. I don't know of this particular line is tunnels, perfectly straight tunnels. I think in the future they're going to say this: the the cost blew out so much, like literally, it's it's astronomical amount of money. Uh, I think they're just going to say we're going to run the maglev a lot slower, but we're going to be adding bends and having more of it above ground or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's it's. But again, you know, once once it does go through to uh, Osaka, when it gets to Nagoya, I don't think it's going to make a profit. It definitely won't. When it goes through to Osaka, though, who knows? It could be an astronomical success. Um, you know, business people might go, this is what we've been waiting for. And, uh, you know, it might make squillions of dollars. So, you know, uh, until it happens, we don't know. Everybody always thought that the Shinkansen was not going to make money. And look at it now. So, you know, interesting times with the maglev. But again, I don't understand. And it's not up for me to understand because I don't make these decisions. But I don't understand why they've designed something that requires water to be squirted at it um, for the whole length of the line. That's 
that's uh, that's got to cause problems. Um, not just with squirting the water, but you've got to have water pumps. You've got to have you know all sorts of stuff along the line that the maglev was supposed to uh, get rid of. You know, maglevs electromagnets. It should be that easy. But now that you're adding water, water pipes, water pressure billions of bloody sprinkler heads um it's going to be interesting but you know obviously they they know what they're doing and um whatever they do they do well it just says so it says soon kind of sad yeah you know even the uh the the uh, shinkansen to sapporo is even uh, delayed and being put back again and again and again and they've stopped doing that as well they've stopped saying what year now for that um, but uh, yeah the the delays with that are, are just getting crazy as well yeah like the beyond 2000 brett uh yeah where we say you know in the future we're going to have this that and the other and it just kind of like never happens mm. uh, it's one bit of technology i never want to see actually i never want to see a flying taxi i i i, I think it'd be more dangerous than anything i know some cities especially in america have tried uh drones for delivering parcels and that and they've been a total failure They've been an absolute total failure and the accidents I've had and the problems I've had and, you know, it's just, you you got to come to the realisation that some things are just not practical at all. Could you picture India implementing flying taxis? Oh my God. What a nightmare that would be. Uh, in saying that though, uh, as my brain is thinking on a hell of a lot of medication at the moment they are setting up because uh, it was on the news i remember now they are setting up five buildings in the melbourne cbd area for uh flying taxis which are just basically little helicopters um and they're supposed to be starting a trial it's uber it's, it's called uber 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 fly or uber something or other and that's supposed to be starting in melbourne is it this year Sam might be able to tell us this year. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this year, a trial. But the problem is you've got to get to the top of the friggin' skyscraper. You know, they're not landing on the road. You've got to get to the top of the skyscraper. You tried a driverless Uber. Um, I've tried driverless buses in, in, in Perth. Um, and I've, dri I've tried driverless buses in Singapore as well. I've been on like loads of driverless trains. I'm pretty sure we all have, uh, but the buses are somewhat interesting. Well, I can answer that one, Russell, very easily, and the answer to that is no, absolutely not, and it's never going to happen because uh, the governments we have under the system that we have, um, which is the British system, um, they don't think about the future. Uber Air, thanks Sam, it's called Uber Air, so that's going to be starting in Melbourne. They are actually starting it in Melbourne. Um, but I think it's going to be a big flop and I think people are going to get injured and or die and then they're going to scrap it. Um, the problem with Australia, Russell, uh, because we're under the Westminster system of uh, politics, is uh, our governments only look to the next election. That's all they look for. So they will never do a big spend. They will never say, we're going to build something and another party could take its glory when it opens. It's never going to happen. And then, of course, we can sack our prime ministers, and which we have. And, you know, it's just... So Australia will never commit to it. Did you know? I mentioned it on a stream before, just in case uh, you never heard if you're new here. Uh, not new here, but haven't been on the stream. Um, JR... JR that run the Shinkansen, they offered Australia to build a Shinkansen network free of charge. They said to the government, you give us planning approval, you give us the land, you, give us, you, you tell us where it'll be and we will build the high-speed rail and we will, opera we will operate it with Japanese Shinkansen. But the catch is we build it, we have the lease on the line. So in other words, they get the revenue uh, for I can't remember how long it was, 25 years or 50 years. Or so. it, wa it wasn't a long length of time. They said, but we, we have the complete lease on the line. Uh, and the government said no. 
the government said, no. So we were going to get high-speed rail free of charge. And the government said, no. Uber air fryer. So, yeah, you know, nothing in Australia. That's why Australia uh, is so... You don't realise Australia is very 1980s until you actually travel overseas. Um, and then you come back here and you go, wow, we are so far behind in, in like everything, uh, whether it be from our traffic lights to our roads to our public transport to our shopping to our... You know, we, we are literally, literally so far behind. Um, and it's because we do it the cheapest possible way. We do it for a three-year period, three-year period, you know. Um, and then even the government promises stuff to happen in that three-year period or four-year period, and then they win the election, and then they go back on their promises. You've seen that many times as well. So, yeah, we will never get a high-speed rail. Um, even UK has fast trains. We saw a picture the other day. Hello, Saboraja. I'll read your thing in a minute. Uh, we were... Uh, my housemate and I, it was yesterday or the day before, in uh, Europe... Europe, there's a graveyard of high-speed rail trains, Eurostars and all sorts of stuff, TGVs, everything, scrapped, all scrapped, just sitting there, rotting away, because, of course, they've upgraded, upgraded, upgraded. If Australia didn't want to go through the spend of high-speed rail and didn't want to go with JR, it could have bought second-hand bloody high-speed trains. There's so many of them in the world. You're sitting at a coffee shop in downtown Sparrow watching the folks walk by in the snow. Only one week to go. Yay! I, I came on because I was showing everybody the link you sent me for the uh, JR passes in uh, Hokkaido, Sapporo, Jay. So thank you. And I'll put the link to it in the community tab if you all want to uh, have a look. Uh, one week to go. I am. I, I, I hope I get better. I'm pretty sure I will. There's a week to go. Uh, unless it's extremely serious. But um, I. I I can't wait. I really can't. And as I say, like it's it's weird going to Japan now because you Dylan will know he's been there so many times. Russell, Mad Hatter, you know, you, you you even though you are, you don't feel like a tourist when you go there now. And that's why I said to Shoto when we were doing Mount Fuji, I said, "Can I not be classed as a tourist?" And he said, "If you watch the video, he said." Um, you will always be classed as a tourist. It's like, oh, thanks. He just shattered me. But, um, you know, like most tourists would get to a place, Sapporo. Um, they'd get to the hotel and they'd have a shower and they'd go for a meal. And do you know what I mean? Like they would do the touristy thing. I'm getting to Sapporo. I'm dropping off my bag. I'm going to Big Camera to do shopping. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like it's like I'm just coming home and like be before I settle in for the night, I have to go do my shopping. So, you know. Happy to take my ticket if I can't go. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it in my will and um, testament just in case anything happens. You're, uh, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, he says. <laughs> God, I hope I get well. Oh, God. I really hope I do because I can't wait to get there. Man. You just upgrade to advanced tourists. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do. It was it was actually uh, last year, the snow festival last year, the 2023 once. It sounds weird saying 2023. That was the first time I was in Sapporo where the tourist thing left me because I was there so long. Um, you know, I got up there, did the snow festival, yada, 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 yada. And then I had like two weeks where I wasn't... I didn't feel like a tourist anymore, right? I, w I was getting up in the morning. I was going to get my cup of coffee and my, my thing from Macca's. You know, I had a routine. I was getting a routine happening. I was going to the supermarket. I was, you, you know what I mean? And it felt really nice. It felt really, really nice. Um, is Miguel the pineapple snob looking after your place? Yes, he is. And then when I come back, he's going to leave Melbourne because it's too dangerous. He's had enough of Melbourne. So, um, yeah, he's going to look after uh, Bella. He's, uh, he's going to make Bella really fat because every time I don't look, he sneaks her food. And I see out of the corner of my eye. It's like, ah, okay. Unless you speak really good Japanese and you get upgraded to step further to temporary worker. See, I don't really talk to anybody in Japan. Um, so I, 
So therefore, I don't need to use Japanese. So therefore, I should be allowed to be upgraded anyway to, to temporary worker because I don't need to talk to anybody in Japan because my, my, my needs are not high. The things that I need, I know what they are. Like, I know where my coffee is. I know where to go if I need to buy ibuprofen. Um, I know where to go when I want to buy electrical stuff that I shouldn't be buying. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't need to really stop and ask someone something. My, my, my little life there is very simple. You know, if, if my little brain can't figure it out myself, then I, I kind of like, you know, I don't go there. I don't worry about it type thing. So, yeah. Um, it, it'd be impossible to learn Japanese. I don't know how any, I don't know how any of you learn how to speak Japanese. It's just, it's, it's an impossibility. Absolutely impossibility. It's crazy. Um, yeah. So, yeah, big camera. Thank you, Sapporo J, for sending me the uh, Google Maps on where Big Camera is now. Because I would have got to the train station. I would have been mortified. I would have gone there and gone, oh, my God, where, where's my shopping? Uh, my shopping's gone. So, yeah, thank you for that. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Oh, my God. I was... Is that Australia in Japanese? <laughs> it looks like Australia with an O. <laughs> Australia, 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 it is, it's Australia, that's how you say Australia, is it really? Australia, mate, yes, I thought so, wonderful. No, I wouldn't do it, Brett. I wouldn't do it. I don't know if you've already done it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it because uh, Jetstar got me stranded in Osaka. Some of you might remember. Some of you may not even know. Jetstar got me stuck in Osaka. And even to this day, I've not got any money back or nothing. They were bastards. Absolute bastards. I, would ne I, I wouldn't even spit on a Jetstar plane. Would I would never give them a time of day. I wouldn't care if they had dollar fares going to Japan. There is no way on this God-forsaken planet bloody earth would I ever hop on a Jetstar plane again. Whether it was direct, whether they got bloody Concords and whatever. It, it, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, I noticed it was really close. Yeah, yeah, so um, I won't even need to look at the map when I get there. It's, like, pretty cool. Um, interesting building they've gone into. The building looks smaller than what the big camera was. And I was thinking to myself, what a shit weekend that would have been for the staff. No doubt they moved in the summer, Sapporo J, because uh, could you picture how shitty it would have been moving all the stock from a big camera? to another skyscraper it would have been a, oh it would have been the worst bloody weekend of your life you would you wouldn't mind if it was a long distance away you know packing it putting it on trucks the trucks move it whatever you're talking across the road how annoying would that be like just taking it, it like it would be awful it'd be the worst thing on the planet earth people people in melbourne keep driving in front of trams even though it's been there since 1885 yes um when i used to work on the trams there used to be so many accidents with trams tram e every day there's accidents just tell the nearest japanese person this and they won't understand look when i say ueno ueno whatever you want to call it they don't even understand that so i am not going to say Watashi wa hentai oji desu. What did I say? Uh, hentai. Isn't hentai... Hentai is a word I should not be saying. No Jetstar ever again. Yeah, stuck in Hawaii for four days. Yeah, Jetstar bastards. And they laughed at us. They laughed at us at the airport. You know, if they would have shown some sort of empathy... And still stranded me. It would have been, yeah, whatever. You know, but I, I wouldn't have been as angry. They, The staff laughed. 
If Jetstar could give me a permanent resident for... No, 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 no. There is nothing that Jetstar could do that would... Uh, that would... Um, no, not even... No, not even... I'm sorry. Not even Japan. That's how much I hate Jetstar with a passion. Um, they could never, ever, ever get... Me. If I was in Japan this time around um, and every airline in the world went bankrupt and there was only Jetstar, I'd have to be illegal and locked up in Japan. Because, yeah, no. They left your wheelchair in the rain. Oh, dang. And there was a flight recently, and, and it, it was delayed for days. Everybody was at the airport. Jetstar never told the passenger, gave the passengers no information. Then when they did fly the passengers out, they forgot the luggage. They didn't take anybody's luggage. A whole out. I, I understand how you might forget a bag, or you know what I mean? The whole under the whole, underneath the plane, it was completely empty. Three hundred and something passengers, and they didn't take a single bag with them. Like what the? You expect to, me to trust you in the friggin' air, and you can't even remember to put a bag on the plane? Like, come on. Ah, oh, I see. God, that would have cost them a fortune. Are, are, are they knocking down that building, Sapporo J? Because if they, if if I'm assuming they're rebuilding the station to look like, um, like a Mia station, or you know, like with the Shinkansen with the long platforms and that. Uh, so are those skyscrapers going completely? Are they? I don't mind saying no. I, I don't mind saying naughty stuff if I can pronounce it. The only thing is, it loses the problem I have. It loses all. Um, it, it, it loses a joke when you can't even say it, and they don't understand. It's just like when you tell a dad joke, and then you have got to explain the the punchline to the joke. Um, you know, if I go up to somebody and go, "Watashi wa hentai oji desu." They're going to look at me and go, we've got no idea what you're saying. That's an old building. Wow. That'd be a modern building in Australia. <laughs> wow. Just see, the amount of money. I'm always staggered by the amount. Of, I, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if Japanese people uh, appreciate how much money on infrastructure and stuff is, is spent in Japan. It's just extraordinary. Um, I know Sapporo J has lived there for like a great portion of his life, but he, he's experienced outside of Japan, so I, he, he may agree with me. But, you know, when you look at the viaducts for the Shinkansen, they don't need them, you know? They, they just, they do the most expensive thing. The road systems are, are beautiful. The buildings are beautiful. The footpaths are beautiful. Bloody, some of the footpaths in Sapporo are heated, for goodness sake, so that they don't get ice on them. Like, well, what's the deal there? If I was king of a town I'd say stuff the residents I wouldn't be paying for stuff like that it's good enough try when you're here oh my god you're gonna get me arrested arrested locked up in Japan oh my goodness I, I the um if I got locked up in Japan it would keep me in Japan that's a good thing the bad thing is they they feed you seafood and I don't eat seafood so that's the thing see that uh Dickhead YouTuber, um, he only got a, a thousand two hundred or a thousand five hundred dollar fine or something. What what's his name? Johnny Johnny Dickhead or whatever his name is. Doesn't really set an example. I know he's been locked up for a long period of time, but these dickheads don't realise that. They don't go, Oh yeah, but he was locked up for many months. They just go, Oh, he only got a fine of, you know, a thousand five hundred. Oh, that's me ad revenue and a couple of super chats. Do you know what I mean? The punishment should have been a lot worse. Everybody looks at me in confusion, Dylan. <laughs> no, I think the people of Markville... Um, I, I think in some ways, if, if I was to do a Markville, it would be similar to North Korea without the death. I, I, I couldn't live with myself if, if I killed somebody. Um... But it would it would it would sort of like be, yes, I am your I am your great leader. And and I have a gold toilet while you 
have a poo bucket type thing. That's what it would be. Uh, ah, actually, I saw a uh, video last night. There's, there's a uh, vending machine that sells whale meat in Tokyo. Um, in saying I don't eat seafood, I, I, I would try whale meat because um, it's just... I most probably won't like it because it's seafood, but, you know, um, it's, it's one of those things that you can't try it anywhere else. But yeah, there's a vending machine. It's a shop full of vending machines. It only sells whale meat uh, in uh, in Tokyo. And they have an explanation on the walls when you go into the vending machine because the world carries on about, you know, killing whales. Um, and it says why it's beneficial to kill whales. And if I remember correctly, it said things like, which is a very poor argument, but it goes, you know, you should kill whales because it's better for the ecosystem because whales kill when they eat, 300 and something fish per meal. Man only takes one fish from the ocean. So there's still 299 fish in the ocean. You know, so the whales, we must get rid of the whales. So therefore they've got, uh, you know, many more fish. Many more, many more fish. So yeah, yeah. interesting argument. I found it very interesting argument. I mean, really, I don't want any animal to die, but in saying that, I do like a steak and a chop. Well, that's uh, Ray. That's one of the things I want to be doing in uh, Sapporo um, with the help of Sapporo J is uh, eating uh, raw horse meat. So I want to be doing that. Um, I want to go to some bars because uh, Dylan introduced me to the bar culture of Japan, which I never thought it was like that. Um, I, I always knew they had a lot of these little bars, but the stuff I had watched before, I thought they were more, um, uh, f you know, uh, you know the videos you see that are, that, that are tourist traps where they get the tourist drunk and you know, I thought it was like that. So, yeah. Uh, it, it, it was a pleasant surprise, the bar. So when I'm in Sapporo, I do want to hit up a couple of bars. I'd actually like to go to a nightclub in in Japan. I've never done that. Uh, I'm assuming Sapporo has nightclubs. I'd like to go to some nightclubs and hear some doof doof music. I think that'd be good. Hello, Mike. Uh, where in Japan are you going to be again, Brett? Because uh, I'm there next week as well. Uh, 10 degrees you're going to be. So you're going to be in a warmer place than me. Where are you going to be, Brett? Um, please forgive me. I need to put the kettle on. I have the dry horrors. All this medication's drying me up. Something. Tell you. Tell you. I am as sick as a dog, people. Take pity on me. Uh, we just had a look at the JRL passes before for the Hokkaido region. I'm just talking now because um, you're talking, which is nice. I like it when you talk. It's really because I get really bored. And uh, as I can't go out between now and next week, um, or, or I'll spend money. That's why I can't go out. Uh, I'm just so bored. And if you people don't talk to me, I get really bored. You don't like nightclubs. The last time I like a good nightclub, I've got to say. But in saying I like a good nightclub, I don't want to be that old, tragic man that thinks he's still young at a nightclub. You always see them at a nightclub. There's always one, you know. They'll wear the baseball cap or whatever, or they'll wear the clothes that they think is hip and cool that the kiddies, you know, wear. But, but you know, no matter, no matter how hard you try when you get to a certain age, no matter how hard you try, you do not know fashion. Right. That's why I don't dress in fashion anymore. It came to the stage where I was going into the shops that the younger generation were going into and buying these hip clothes. But I wasn't buying the hip clothes. That's the thing. And I really, you know, and I'm saying I, the last time I went to a club was decades ago, I think. But you, you would always see the old person that should be in the nursing home at the nightclub doing the little shuffle, you know, with the beer in the hand or whatever. And uh, I, I don't want to be like that, ever. There has to come a time when, they, when you have to sort of go, okay, I'm now in the bingo stage of my life, rather than the nightclub stage. 
but um yeah the last time uh, the last time i went to a nightclub i got absolutely maggoted i also believe if you go to a, a nightclub you got to stay there till it closes in the morning uh and i got so maggoted uh and that's a good australian word for you maggoted um that you know the shirt came off and i was up on the stage dancing and man oh, i was going for you you get you get this boy drunk it's party central it's very hard to get me drunk though i mean maggoted drunk um yeah I've got a I've got a rough idea uh, a rough idea what they said and I'm pretty sure it'll get me locked up and or slapped. Um. Yeah. Uh. F um. No. I. Yeah. No. I. 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 I don't understand clothes. Even when I was younger and and I went into places that was the places and you would buy the clothes that were fashionable or cool. I put them on and it was, it was like, I, I, I don't understand this. And I still think I look very different to what everybody else is wearing. So I just gave up, as you could tell. I, I am definitely not a fashionable uh, person. Found there being a Sapporo for 25 nights, a full apartment. That's nice. How much? And uh, Airbnb is not encouraged in Japan. It's not really encouraged anywhere, really. But I... I don't know. He's, would I wouldn't, but but that's me. I know so many people that travel overseas that go in Airbnb. I used to host Air, Airbnb. I could never travel with the risk of going to an Airbnb, and it may not be there, or it may not be what's on the tin, or whatever. Is there anybody else that would never, ever, ever do an Airbnb? Wow. Thanks, Russell. Yeah, we can go to a nightclub. It's okay. If you are old and you go to a nightclub, it is perfectly fine if you are with a group of people that are like your friends and your age. You know what I mean? Like that, that's perfectly acceptable because you can be in your corner or you're part of the dance floor and, they, and all the young'uns look at you and go, oh, look, the pensioners are out for their night out. That, perfectly acceptable. That's the only time an old person should go to a club. I'm talking about that single person that goes to the club, that really old fart, you know, oh, I'm so hip. You see him a lot in Australia, walking down the road, you know, with baseball caps on and, you know, uh, the, the denim shorts is the thing the old farts wear here to try and make themselves look young, you know, and the sneakers and the... And it's like, nah, nah, you're way past that. Nothing wrong with denim shorts if you wear them, but I mean, they, they, they go for that 80s cool look. Does, does that make sense? And they think that it's still current now. Now, you're a respectable dresser, uh, Dylan. A respectable dresser. Osaka. Actually, between Osaka and Nagoya. You sh I don't understand, again, why anybody would go to Japan this time of year and not go to the Sapporo Snow Festival. It makes no sense because it's free. Um, Brett, why? Osaka and Nagoya, why? I'm getting a drink. Now I don't I don't normally uh I don't normally drink this, but I didn't want to be jingling a tea bag over there and I've run out of coffee. Oh my god, I've run out of coffee. Uh but I am having uh Cadbury's uh, drinking chocolate. 
Cadbury's drinking chocolate. Do you know I use Cadbury's drinking chocolate for one reason only? So this is really the first time I've drunk Cadbury's drinking chocolate because when I eat Wheat Bix, or if you're overseas, Weeda Bix, Wheat Bix, when I eat Wheat Bix, um, I drench them in Cadbury's drinking chocolate. So I could have diabetes, is what I'm saying. I put I put uh, four Wheat Bix in a bowl with uh, two heaped tablespoons of drinking chocolate on my wheat bix that's what i do that's what i do no wonder i crash you know oh i've got so much energy uh kind of both no matter who you say it to airbnb in japan is highly regulated is it only hotels for you yeah only hotels for me as well i don't think there's a big enough saving with airbnb especially in japan to warrant not being at a hotel, personally. There is a, it's not Airbnb, but uh, there is a old train station in Hokkaido, uh, in between uh, Hakodate and Sapporo, that um, JR has uh, sold to a Japanese guy. And he's turned the train station into a B and B, and the train still stops there, but there's nothing there. Like there, there's no town, there's no village, there's nothing to see. You you're just at the train station, but um, he uh, he he cooks you barbecue at night. So you're sitting on the train platform, and he 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 starts up the barbecue and um, cooks you all the beautiful food, and you watch your trains come and go, and that. I'd love to stay there. I only discovered it recently, so when I go back to Hokkaido, when I do a Hokkaido tour, um, this year, this whole year, if I ever go back to, if I ever go back to Japan a number of times this year, like I did last year, it is only going to be Hokkaido. I'm not going to do any other part of Japan at all. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really want to, all, all these little gems, are starting to appear in Hokkaido that I never knew existed. It was like, wow, you can stay there. Wow, you can do this. Wow, you can do that. So, yeah. But it feels more expensive than a hotel. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's more expensive than a hotel. I, I Yeah. Yeah, I'd, ne I'd never trust Airbnb. Even if it's regulated, I wouldn't trust it. Keeping slim makes one look young. No, it doesn't. My face has collapsed. I did used to look so young. I don't know what happened to me. My 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 um, what what's the uh, collagen? It's it's just gone. Pfft. My face is. Pfft. I don't get it. The rest of my body is not like this. It's just my face. Never used to be like that. You know, uh, five years ago, it was never like that. Yeah, why Osaka? Got it. And and you won't be doing Airbnb in Australia because they're putting government taxes on it uh, from this year. It, it, so it's going to be like really expensive because they're blaming Airbnb that there's no properties on the market for locals to live in because everybody's airbnb -ing them. And a hotel as well, you don't have to worry. You don't have to clean it if you have an accident. They're, they're very forgiven with you, they're not, you know, type thing. Um, everything is done for you. You don't have to think about it. Uh, and that's what I pay for. I don't pay to go to a place to have to vacuum. You know what I mean? I go to a place because I'm on holidays and I don't even want to make my bed. I want them to make my bed. I want them to give me the complimentary shampoos and, you know, uh, and, and fill my coffee and tea bags. And, you know, this is what I want. Um, I, I, I would hate being in an Airbnb. I, I really would. Not knowing if the sheets were going to be clean or who was in it last time or... Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do it myself. Oh my god, that is not good. I've forgotten what I said. I don't know what is good and what's not. But, and I don't know if it would be much cheaper. Pauline on the channel and my mum and I, worst holiday ever went on in my whole history of life. 
Uh, not be, not because of Pauline. Pauline was very good, but um, we uh, we stayed at a place in Singapore that was not Airbnb, but it was like Airbnb. You you could say it was it was like a it was like a whole apartment type thing, but it was it was really affordable, and especially because like three of us were going by the time we all chipped in um and it, you know it, it was we were actually living quite in luxury so i think if you actually had a group of people together i would be even less inclined to go airbnb i'd say let's get a you know really expensive hotel room with joining rooms and a, a, a you know a club room or whatever they call it in between the rooms and yeah Hundred days max or something like that. Yeah, uh, that's what they're implementing in Melbourne, and they're also putting a daily tax on it as well. I think a ten dollar, ten or fifteen dollar a day tax on it. So it's going to become just, you know. I'm February going to Queen's farewell concert in Japan. Oh, I never knew that was happening. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, uh, like the 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 actual band Queen, uh, with uh, um, with Brian May and all that. In oh, really? But that's only one night. That's only one night. Surely you can pop up to. Uh, how long are you in Japan for? Surely you can pop up to Sapporo. Pop up to Sapporo. Oh my God. Uh, uh, the capsule motels I've stayed at, the answer is yes. Uh, the capsule motels are different to normal hotels in the extent of you have to be out of the capsule motel between 10 and 4, I think it is, 10 and 4. Uh, you, you can use the facilities in the capsule motel, you, like the lounge room and the computer room and all that sort of stuff, but you can't go in your capsule. Your capsule is off bounds. You, you leave your luggage there. You leave all your possessions in your capsule but you can't go in there between 10 and 4. And they change the sheets. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hotels are re really reasonable. That that one I stayed at in Osaka, Brett, uh, was... It, it, it was just exceptional. It was... It was the best hotel I've stayed at in my whole entire life. And that was pretty cheap. I can't remember how much it was because we booked it there and then. Um, that, was a, that was a magnificent hotel and it included the food. That's the thing. It included the food as well. I didn't need to buy breakfast or that. It, it was included. Um, and, and this is the thing. Why do you want to do the Airbnb where you've got to clean it up before you leave and... Um, you know, I mean, I'm not a messy person, but you know, I don't want to be bloody making beds or stripping beds and, you know, vacuuming because I might have put sand on the carpet or whatever, you know, and then having to go buy food and then cook it and oh, I don't want to do all that sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? A hotel does it all for you. 10 to 3. Yes, thank you. 10 to 3. So, I mean, unless I was sick... There would be no reason anyway I would be anywhere between 10 to 3. I suppose with a hotel you might pop back pop back early afternoon and sort of like have a quick cup of tea while you drop off your shopping or whatever. I, I think it, in Sapporo it's a lot easier because, see, when you go out, it's cold. So you're wearing all your jackets and that anyway. Whereas if you were in Tokyo in the summer... And you went out in the morning, it might be cool and you got a jacket. In the afternoon, you want to get rid of your jacket. So you go back to your hotel. Um, again, with the capsule motels, you can still use all the facilities and you, you got your locker and all that. You can, you can do all that. But if you're going all the way back to your hotel, you usually want to sit down for five minutes, or I do anyway. You know, chuck on the kettle, have a quick drink, refresh yourself and, and, and go out again. But, you know, the EG capsule motel... Look what you got! Look what you got for the price in that. You know, you got bloody curry, rice, ice cream, uh, tea, coffee, soft drinks. Uh, f y y like it's all included. Um, so yeah, 
I've never been uh, never been one for Airbnb. Don't get it. Do not get it. Yeah, but you're you're a you're a party animal, Dylan. You are a party animal. Um, even if I went out really really late when I'm in Japan, because I do go out really really late, I still only I you know I only sleep a, literally a, a a few hours in Japan. I never have like an eight hour sleep in Japan, but I never feel fatigued. Here I always feel fatigued. Um, so yeah, I can, I can be out till two, three, whatever, and just get a couple of hours sleep. That that night we went out. Uh, I didn't feel great the next day because I was hung over, but I didn't feel tired from not having enough sleep. Oh, that was interesting. Um, Jeez, I wish I knew about that. I would have uh, potentially adjusted my trip to uh, to uh, go to that uh, concert. Interesting. Three months this time. Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Everybody, everybody, uh, just back the truck up, everybody. Uh, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. You know me, I'm a critic. I'm a critic to everyone and everything. I'm going to be a critic to uh, Brett now. Brett is going, ladies and gentlemen, in case you haven't been reading the chat, I'm sure you have been. Brett is going to, uh, between Osaka and Nagoya, this time of year, to see Queen's concert. Perfectly acceptable. Wonderful. Nothing like going to a concert in Japan or Singapore. Singapore Concerts in Singapore. Oh my God, amazing. The concert's one night, and then maybe a night to recover, and maybe a night, and, and maybe a night before, because you want to get excited and sort of like walk around the, you know, go near the venue type thing, and go, oh my god, tomorrow I'm going to be the. Co-. I get that, I get that, I get that, I get that. You're going there for three months, and you are going to see the concert, and then you have two months, and three weeks left in Japan this time of year and you're not going to Sapporo? What? Like, oh my, like what? The cost it would cost you to fly up in a plane or take the train, again, you've got to realise, excluding food and drinks, like if you want to go out and party, you've got to pay for it. But look at all the free entertainment in Sapporo this time of year, and you're going there for three months. Even if you went up there for like a day or two days or something. Like, what? Snow festival, ice festival, um, uh, fun park festival. Uh, Sapporo beer factory. Um, God, the... Oh, they said my like, wait. Multiple days drinking, yes. The joys of being the joys of being young, yes. But do remember your liver in your whatever you do now, it does catch up with you, Dylan, in your later life. Never thought it did, but trust me, it does. Uh, you like the EG? The EG was uh, great. It's gone up in price, though, sadly, because bloody all the tourists have gone to Tokyo now, and all the tourists have discovered. Not because of my channel, but they've all discovered now that EG is good value. So, they're, yeah, EG, EG is very either expensive or very hard to get into now. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, I mean, if you want to stay Airbnb, that's entirely up to you. I, I just I just don't get it, you know. Um, what it, And it's just due to the fact of whatever Airbnb costs you, like, maybe I'd do it in another country, but no, I wouldn't take the risk. But, um, but like in Japan, the, the quality and the standard that you can get for such a cheap price, you know? Yeah, I was quite surprised the amount of conversation that was happening the night we went out. Um, little bar, only 10 people in it, maybe, I don't know. But the conversation never stopped all night. Very unusual. See, like in in Australia, if you went to somewhere like that, you would be really, really trying to keep the conversation going. 
you know what I mean? It, there, there'd be like lots of awkward silence, and then you would have to just come up with, you know, is anything happening at work? You know, type thing. Um, uh, it, it would not be a flowing conversation. Um, I remember. I remember we left there well into the morning. I can't remember what time we left. Was it two o'clock or something? I don't know, two o'clock, three o'clock, something like that. And uh, it didn't feel like we were there that long. It felt like we were there for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. So um, yeah, it was a, it was an eye opener to me. I thought it was going to be absolutely hell, especially with it being in Osaka, and then being a metal bar. And an American metal bar. All of these things sound disastrous, do they not? <laughs> you know, I thought we were going to go up there, and the guy was going to, you know, have uh, you know blood coming out of his nose with the piercings, and you know, going to go in there, and the music was going to be so loud. Going... It, was, it was very nice. Around four a.m. There you go. It was around four a.m. We left. Mark had a late night. Um, no, I really did enjoy it. So when I go to Sapporo this time, I am not going to drink at my capsule hotel like I usually do. Uh, I'm I'm going to go to a bar, and I'll most probably go to a bar most nights, even if it's just for a drink, just to you know, just as that wind down kind of thing. Uh, it was very, it was very relaxing, very relaxing. Uh, I am going to make a point as well this trip to still have my McDonald's for breakfast. That'll never change. But my evening meals will not be McDonald's. I'm going to make a point. Even if I go to that steak shop that I showed on the channel, you know where I got the the uh, beef from? Uh, was it beef? Whatever I got. Even if I go there every night, whatever, I'm going to make a point in, in doing something like that. Shame on me, yes. But... It, I wouldn't say shame on you if you were only there for like a couple of weeks because it is a fair distance away from Osaka. You're going for three months, Brett. And there's so much free stuff there, Brett. And don't forget, Brett, all of us from the channel, and you're invited as well, are going to Sapporo for Christmas. And if you'd like to know about it, the link is in the description below, the Facebook page. Do check it out. Um, we've got, uh, Russell and I is going to do a challenge at Christmas. Should we tell them about the challenge? I'm sure we can tell them about the challenge. Um, do I have any pickup lines? Uh, I like the one where you walk up to somebody and you go, so you lick your finger, you go, best I get you out of those wet clothes. Um, that always works a treat. Uh, I, I found that, uh, Dobri Kozi is not very good. People slap you when you say that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I think when you're like me, you don't need pickup lines. People people see you and they go, "That is that is a good Australian man." He he is our fantasy. Uh, 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 what do they say in hard off? Hard off for your pleasure. They say they they say that sort of stuff. Uh, Russell and I are going to do a challenge. When we have uh, Christmas in Sapporo. Not quite sure which direction it's going to work yet. We're, we'll figure that out. But we're going to do a challenge. He is going to fly Sapporo, Tokyo. Or Tokyo, Sapporo. We're not sure which direction yet. And I'm going to catch the train. We're going to start at the same point, the same hotel. And we're going to end, if we go to Sapporo, we're going to end at McDonald's in Sapporo, if you know where that is. Uh, Russell doesn't know. He's going to cheat and he's going to look on Google Maps. He's going to research. But we're going to have a race. And even though I say that he will still be a little bit quicker by the plane, a little bit quicker, it's going to be a, a only a little bit quicker, but he is going to be more fatigued than what I am. We're going to prove to you once and for all that you should catch bloody trains in Japan. Rather than flying. I'll see if I can go to Sapporo Snow and Ice Festival this year. This year? Mad Hatter. Back, back up. Reverse. 
You're going to see if you can go to the Sapporo Snow Festival and Ice Festival this year. Th Do you mean this year or next year? I know you were saying next year. Do you mean this year? Oh, my God. If you were coming up this year, we are going to party like it's 2023. Th oh, my God. That would be the greatest bit of news I've had while I feel sick if you're coming up to the Sapporo Snow Festival and Ice Festival this year. I think you meant next year. You said next year. In our earlier conversation, you said next year. This year? It'll be take care of Sapporo. I'll beat you, hands down. Uh, I won't beat you, but uh, you, it won't be far away. Like one of those... You know, Top Gear did do a Japan race, and um, it was unfair. I watched the episode the other night. We might play it sometime on, on Facebook or something. It was an unfair challenge. They They... they when I've watched the Top Gear challenges before, I've sort of thought, we know they're mucking around, we know it's scripted, but, you know, it is somewhat true what they're doing. The Japan one, they, they really, really, really manipulated it so the car would win. There was no way, if normal people were doing it, um, that uh, the car would win. This year... You're thinking of flying out in the next couple of weeks. You're thinking of flying out the next couple of weeks, Mad Hatter. Oh, my God. Can I be your tour guide? Oh, my God. Really? Uh, top Gear Challenge by the budget, yeah. Yeah, as in, like as in three weeks. What? This is extraordinary. Oh my god! Just think, I I can take Mad Hatter to Big Camera and 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 Hard Off and 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 Daiso and 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 Don Quixote and 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 and. Oh my god, Mad Hatter! Like, oh, once you've done the Sapporo Snow Festival. Oh my God, once you've done the Sapporo Snow Festival, you, you, it's the only thing I do every year. Even my mum rang me up the other day. She didn't even realise I was going to the snow festival. She said, oh, you know, you've got a while to go until you go to Sapporo for Christmas. I said, no, 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 I'm going in a couple of weeks. She said, what do you mean you're going in a couple of weeks? I said, it's a, it's a tradition now, I have to go. I have to go every year to the Sapporo Snow Festival. Uh, it, 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 like... There is nothing greater on the planet Earth than that city at that particular time of year. It is, it is, it, it like, no video will ever show you what Sapporo is like during this time of year. No commentary, no photograph. It is, it's extraordinary. It's beyond extraordinary. That's why when Brett, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having a bit of a laugh with Brett, of course. You, do, you know, what, Brett's got his trip planned and whatever. But, I, you know, I keep saying to people, don't do these tourist things. And I know he's going for a concert, but then he's going to go do the tourist things. He's going to go to Osaka and do the tourist things, which he's done before. Um, uh, like, like if, if, if Brett went up and saw the snow festival, he'd book that in every year. If Mad Hatter does it for the first time, she'd book that in every year. It's just extraordinary. And it's free. That's the bit I love about it. It's free. And it's huge. It's huge. I'm not talking about the ice sculptures. They're huge. The snow sculptures. I mean, the actual... The, the celebrations go throughout. The, it, it's just mind-boggling. Oh, my God. And clubbing. Oh, my God. Uh, Mad Hatter at a club, I think, would be really fun. Oh, Mad Hatter, you have to do this. And for all the stuff you've given on the channel and all the help and everything you've done, like, I'm taking you to dinner, I'm taking you to drinks, we're going to karaoke, I don't know, whatever. Oh, my God. But, again... Once you've done it, you, you, you won't do it every year, unfortunately. So it's going to stuff you up for the rest of your life. There's, there's nothing like it. 
Nothing. Nothing. Negative mark. Can't find a, abs a single absolute fault with it. None. Yeah, I was. I, I saw that as well, Sam. I was actually going to do one with you and Victor. Um, but then when I saw that thing on YouTube, I never did it. I never suggested it to you all. But I want. I was going to do one with uh, you, uh, you traveling from Flinders Street to Southern Cross in a wheelchair um, on the train, Victor going by tram and me by foot. And I reckon I would have beat you both by going on foot. So that's what I was wanting to do. But then I saw that thing on YouTube and I thought, well, they've done something like that already, so I won't do it. I... Uh, no fucking way, no, no, uh, it, no, like, when you're at the, like, at the snow festival, your, your foot will be tapping just automatically, like, uh, at the night time, um, one of the places you can't really live stream, because there's just no signal at all, I think it's because of the TV tower, it's near the TV tower, and, uh, they get the, you know, the, the, the Japanese little girl bands doing their thing down there, you know, <laughs> it's just hypo, you know, and, um, yeah, and just like everybody's, everybody down there is just dancing and you just end up being sucked into the fun, do you know what I mean? It's it's like really weird. But um, yeah, like I when I, uh, last year, 2023, because I went to the government building uh, to get the posters. And um, when I was up there, the... Uh, the girl heard that I spoke English as she stuck her head around the corner and she spoke English as well, Japanese girl though. And, uh, you know, we were talking for um, a while and she she was even going, you know, like, how did you know about the Sapporo Snow Festival? Because, again, they don't really advertise anything out of Japan and really, at the end of the day, the information you can get outside of Japan doesn't really explain to you the scale of this and that it's free and that it's you know, in the heart of the city, and, you know, you, like, their information is not very good, and so she was saying, how'd you discover it, and yada, 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 and uh, we got talking about it, and she she learned that I'd been up there for a couple of them, a couple of years, and she was like, oh, wow, and and you're, you're going to come back again, and even last year, I said to her, yes, I will be there in 2024, and 2025, and 2026, and 20, and, and she was like, wow is it is it really that good and it's like it is just extraordinary and in the uh, government building where you pick up the poster from it's a whole floor of this skyscraper literally a whole floor of this skyscraper and there's hundreds and hundreds of people on this floor hundreds and all of them are just there to uh um organize the Sapporo Snow Festival hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them um and it's just like a hive of activity you know and uh it's just it's just perfect whoever runs that council i don't know whoever runs that council whatever they had just got their shit going on you know what i mean they they just it's just extraordinary what that council does it it just extraordinary um and People from all around the world. These ice sculptures, uh, snow sculptures, sorry, you know, they're not just made by the Japanese. The big ones are made by the uh, military, as you know. But the other 500 sculptures, yeah, 500 sculptures, if not more, they're made by people from all around the world. People fly in, like professional uh, snow sculptures, they are. They're not just like you and me. Professional artists and sculptures and everything fly in from all around the world you know this these sculptures are made from someone in germany and sweden and here and here and america and yeah 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 yeah. it's just it's it and again you, you can never capture it on camera how can you show somebody i know my streams go a long time and i really bore you people with them but how can i show you 600 in total whatever it is 600 750 i don't know whatever snow sculptures it's impossible most of you i bet thought that there was like maybe 10 5 10 there's like there's like 
500, 600 of them, 700, I don't know. There's, there, there's hundreds of them, hundreds. And that's even before you get to the ice sculptures. And and it it's just freaking amazing. And I do like to get there early because I like to see them making them and preparing it. And it's it's just so fascinating. You know, you get there even a week before, like the, the smaller sculptures, they'll just be a, a chunk of snow, a square bit of snow. Right? It gets dumped. Um and, uh, you know, the people from around the world, they all get their little five, uh, I, I think it's a uh, two meter, two meter block of snow. And they're all there with a piece of paper, nothing more, with a drawing on there. And they look at the drawing and they look at the square bit of snow. They go, okay, yep, right, okay, that's what we're making. And then they get to it. And it's like, I've got it's like, it, 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 extraordinary talent, extraordinary. And then every day they basically rebuild it because it snows overnight when everyone's asleep, which means all these intricate, you know, little details and everything are all covered with snow. So early in the morning before anybody gets up, before the snow festival opens, all these thousands of uh, creators are back there again, making their snow sculptures perfect. So that when it opens again, it's, it's just extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. Uh, can you get your poster, please? Yes. Remind me, please, when I'm in Sapporo. Oh, I forget. Remind me when I'm in Sapporo. Have I talked to Victor? Yes, I've talked to Victor. Mm. And I do know there's places around the world that do sand sculptures and that, like Sam's mentioning, and even snow sculptures and that as well. Or ice sculptures. You know, th th this is not a rare thing. But it's the scale of it, you know, 500 of them, 600 of them, whatever it is. It's, it's literally in the hundreds. It's just, it's crazy, man. It's, it's crazy. I did, I did, I did, I did, Dylan, I did. I always... I always do live streams and videos of before the festival, of them setting up the festival, uh, of the festival, and then after the festival. But nobody watches my content. Nobody. And this year uh, we'll be doing the same, you know, on the 23rd, hopefully, if I'm not tired, if, if I am, it'll be the 24th. Um, we'll be down at Adoree Park and I'll be showing you them preparing the snow festival you will see the military and all the military trucks you know like if you like um uh you know uh oh what was a um what was that uh children's cartoon type show and that with army oh you know i don't know think of mash think of anything think of those sort of tv shows with you know the tents and the trucks and the people in their army gear they're all down there, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really cool to see, and you've got big diggers and cranes and all sorts of things, and scaffolding happening, um, so I'll be showing that this year like I have last year, like I did before the pandemic, um, to really show you what sort of work goes into it, because it makes it even more special, that's why I like to get there early, and I encourage anybody going to the snow festival to get there early, to see them physically making it, and then, and then it is, and then you're in awe by it. You're absolutely in awe. Um, and seeing them work, like, dozens and dozens. Uh, the, the video, which will be on my channel, of the army making one of the big sculptures last year, there were dozens of army people and scaffolding, and literally there was a sergeant of the uh, brigade or whatever they were, and he literally just had a piece of paper. And, you know, a couple of the army people would come over to him and he would sort of like go, <laughs> and they'd look, up, they'd look at the paper and they'd look up at this big multi, you know, six-story sculpture and he'd go, <laughs> and then they would say to the people that were sculpting it, the other people from the army, they would go, <laughs> and it, it was just extraordinary. You know, the people that were actually carving it never had the bit of paper. It was literally the information being relayed, and it's just fascinating. And then the night before, oh, my God, the night before, you know all those light mappings? Well, all the lighting, but the light mapping especially, they don't set that up till the night before, literally hours before the snow festival starts. So you've got all these, um, uh, you know, tech um, 
you know, TV vans and everything coming down with satellites and mixers and computer. And you see all the computer people because, you know, they program it and then they lock away the computer or whatever. But you see them there. They're sitting in the snow with the laptops and they're going, you know, and they're lining up the grids of the lights and everything and the projections. And it, it's just so fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And then you always go to bed the night before the snow festival opens and you look at the walkways that are just a, a friggin' mess. There's, there's trucks there and mounds of snow. And, it, 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 and you're thinking, this is never going to be finished. They, they're never going to get this ready on time. All the workers have gone home. You know, it, it's night and it's, it's just a mess. It looks like my bedroom, an absolute mess. And um, you go to bed, you wake up the next morning expecting to see it in this somewhat disaster and it's perfect. I don't know what time they come in. They must, they must go home early, um, you know, eight, eight, eight at night or something once they've set up the, the, the light structures and they must go, well, it's going to snow tonight anyway, so it's no good doing the walkways and all this sort of stuff now because we're going to be double handing it. It's no good us moving the tractors or I don't know. So they must get there like really early, four in the morning, five in the morning, or so, I don't know, and and do a big preparation for it. I don't know, um, and uh, and you get there on day one when it opens, uh, nine o'clock. I think it opens eight o'clock, nine o'clock. You can you can go in there beforehand. It's you know there's no fences or what. You, if you got there early, you can go in there and have a look. It's just like the entertainment and that doesn't. And the shops, because they bring in all the food shops and everything. Oh, it's amazing, you know. And the and the barbecues. There's so many barbecues and the smell and ah. Oh. But um, you get there at nine o'clock, and it just looks like something that's been there for years. It it, it looks like it looks like Disneyland in snow. It literally does. Um, and I think if you never saw them put it together you would not get as much magic out of it. You would still get like a hell of a lot of magic, but you wouldn't get as much magic out of it as you physically see them making this. It's it's thousands of workers. Like um, I, I did have the statistic once. I don't have it now, so I'm only going by memory. But um, I think the military alone, uh, there's something like 3,500 military people making sculptures there. 3,500. And that's before the government workers and the people from around the world that are making theirs. And it's, it's, it's a scale you can't imagine. But they get 2 million tourists in that two weeks. They, they double their population. Sapporo has a population of 2 million. 2 million people go there. And it's managed so well, you would think that there, there was a couple of hundred people there. It, it's, it's just extraordinary. If anybody needs to learn how to do uh, crowd control, um, uh, management, uh, whatever, they need to go to Sapporo. It's just extraordinary. Uh, Mark, could you give me one, please? Uh, have I got a few people asking for posters? Oh, my God. You'll have to remind me, people. Um if if you don't want to if you don't want me to send you an actual poster because it'll be very expensive, I actually have the PDF of the poster, and you can all have the PDF, which has come from Sapporo City Council. It's the it's the official uh, PDF, and you can just get it printed up at like uh, your local printers or whatever, because they just when I go there they they have them printed, but they've just got it off the PDF. If anybody wants a PDF of the poster, let me know. It's a beautiful poster this year. Uh, but if you want a physical poster, just remind me when I'm there. Uh, but but then, you know, it's got to be posted and all that sort of stuff, unless I bring it at Christmas. Uh, Russell, I can get Russell's to him because he's only down the road from me. You saw the Sam one in New Zealand. Yes. How does it not fall over? No frigging idea. No frigging idea, Sam. Um, it It's so compact. They ship in... Something else, I, I, I may probably get this wrong, but they, they, they ship in something like uh, 380 tons of snow. Something like that. They actually ship in, they, they, they like bring in by truck 380 tons of snow. Even though it's snowing in Sapporo and there's a hell of a lot of snow, they, they actually need more snow. They actually need more snow than what Sapporo can offer. 
for these sculptures because there were so many of them. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 380 tons. Might have been more. It would have been more. It wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been less. It's crazy. Uh, see you in Japan. Uh, have a good time at the concert, Brett. And just on the off chance you do get to come to Sapporo while you're there, if you make the plunge and decide to come up, what you pay on the airfare, you're saving with the free events that are in Sapporo. Um, I'll be on YouTube. I'll be on email and that just messages. If you come up to Sapporo, I'll get you. You know, we'll go for dinner. We'll get some drinks. Whatever. You can look at the whatever. So, you know, keep it in mind. Keep it in mind. Ah, um, they did before COVID and I never got to go there. It, it just slipped my mind. Forgot about it. Never went there. Uh, last year, they never had it. So this year, it's the first time it's been, uh, it's, it's returning. Um, I want to go there this year. I want to go there this year. Oh, it's 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 just extraordinary. Um, it, it it's it's just so magical. Uh, it, and when I went in summer, it it was really weird because it felt like a completely different place. Still magical though, but it felt like a completely different place. It was like one extreme to the other, and. Um, and you know the other thing when the snow festival's on, like when I went there in the summer, people were really friendly because there was no tourists. When there's tourists and that many, you know, two million people is a lot of people to manage in that. You would think it would um, test, you know, the the most strident worker. You know, um, they they never lose their cool up there. They 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 just they get this. The people in Sapporo, the workers in Sapporo get this extra energy when the tourists are there in the snow festival. And it's it's so electrifying. It's absolutely electrifying. Even like where uh, where I stay, um, you know, that's a that's a a walk away from a Dory Park. It's a it, you know, not a fair walk, but it's a you know, it's a walk away from a Dory Park. Even that area is electrifying. There's just a buzz. That city has an absolute buzz about it um when the snow festival's on and i understand why it's just bloody beautiful the the, the twinkling lights and the snow falling and the you know the the tram dinging and it's it's ever so beautiful absolutely ever so beautiful so you know it's amazing you're at the snow uh feet right now You would like the PDF one. If anybody would like the PDF poster, um, so I don't have to look for everybody's email address, um, that is easier than a physical poster, by the way, because it's just easier, because you've got to post it, it's expensive, and yada, yada. The PDF, you can blow up to whatever size you want. Um, if you can, please email me so that I don't have to go hunting around for people's email addresses, um, and just email me to the new email address, which is within Japan. 2024 at gmail.com um, and you can have the PDF of the poster which comes straight from Sapporo City Council it's the PDF that they print the posters off um, and that could that that could just be a lot easier and then you could get it printed up to whatever size you want whereas when you get the poster from there there's only two sizes that's the small one and then the other one's uh, the huge one um, I, as I said I'm not getting one for, for Russell because there's really going to be no postage or that he's kind of just down the road but when you're posting something like this overseas you know it can be a can be an expensive sort of situation for a poster but if anybody wants a physical one you'll have to remind me when i'm in Sapporo because i will forget i will forget any anything that you you like the the ferris wheel you know it's something i want to do i'll even forget that so you know you you people have to remind me of these things just send me three pics in real time oh my god i must see them um duck sue duck sue is back from um america america Bum, 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 bum. Let me let me get my email, and we might be able to see these pictures from 
Sapporo J. Oh my god. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, here we go. Ready? Thank you, Sapporo J, for this. Um, so this is a Dory Park, by the way. You can see they're starting to already start to set it up by uh, putting up the the fences that you see. They're only around, um, you know, the big sculptures. You know, the safety areas type thing. You can still go to a Dory Park when they're they're setting this sort of stuff up, but they but you do have to kind of like keep your distance. Um, these uh, see these brown things. Um, that's usually where like the light mapping um, projectors and and computer stuff and that's all in there. So that's where that is. And then uh, the beautiful, beautiful Sapporo TV tower. In fact, where Sapporo J is taking that picture from right now, I always go to that particular location. There's another tree next to it. There's two trees. And if you move over a little bit, um, the Sapporo TV tower is directly in between the two trees and not obscured by the two trees. And then at night time, those two trees are illuminated and they've got fairy lights on them. Oh, they're just so beautiful. And then behind you have the Sapporo TV tower glittering away as well with all its light and splendor and that. It is, it's, it's just extraordinary. It is, honestly, like there is no picture anywhere, there's no video anywhere that can literally express to you the beauty of this and the beauty of color and one of the things with my eyes because my eyes is stuffed as you know is it really responds to light and color it's a real stimulant so when i go to like team labs uh, borderless team labs planet my brain is like somebody that's on drugs it, it my brain just goes to euphoria it's crazy so picture that completely around a city completely around a city from you know the the lights near mcdonald's there you know all those billboards all those beautiful colored lights and then you've got the street that goes down towards the dory park that has all the fairy lights in it with the snow coming down and uh and then you've got the shopping arcades they're all lit up and then you get down to the dory park and that's all lit up and then you keep going down towards the train station you've got the the skating rink and the other trees that are lit up it, it just for me it's it's it just like a drug my brain just goes into absolute bliss uh absolute bliss it's like nothing you've experienced before in your life uh you found the poster it looks so cool yeah yes They're bringing the stuff from man. It's yeah, the show on the side isn't good for the statue. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I was mentioning, I, I can't remember how much it was. I I did learn it the other day. I've totally forgot. Um, and it was uh, it was um, three hundred and eighty ton or something like that. Uh, what don't you care about, uh, Mike? Uh, what don't you care? I don't care, Mark. It's a bit random. You don't care. You don't care about what? I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, but that's what I mean. Like when you see uh, Sapporo J, of course, living there, sees them preparing this, and it is something to behold. It's something to be seen. You know, these trucks are coming with the snow. Um, you know, the big excavators that are there. You know, the all the big machinery, the army trucks, the army tents. Uh, it, it's 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 so weird. It's absolutely uh, weird. Um, how it's put together because it's 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 at a scale I've never seen before, ever. Uh, the poster link if anybody wants it is that a PDF download? Thank you, Sam. Let's uh, have a look. Oh yeah, that's a that, yeah. Well, that's a PDF uh, download there as well. So. Um, yeah, it takes ages to load because it's a it's a pretty big file, but um, that's it there. What a beautiful poster this year. I love the poster this year. It's great. Absolutely beautiful. That's going to look st 
stunning at night down there because they have the posters on light boards and that down there. That's going to look absolutely. That was the countdown timer. We don't need a countdown timer. Uh, I'm going to be here, say, for another 20 minutes, and then I'll go because then the news is coming on. So if you want to talk, keep talking. Uh, I've enjoyed the talk today. Thank you. It's made me feel a little bit better to help me take my mind off my uh, illness at the moment. Who ever thought that uh, a five-minute stream talking about the JRL pass in Hokkaido has turned into a long good afternoon of chatting away, which is good. Paul Bella hasn't been for a walk, but I don't think I'm in the right state of mind to take over a walk, especially in Melbourne. And then, of course, I haven't even discussed them making the ice sculptures. Oh, my God. You know, they make the ice sculptures in the middle of the road when the road's still open. The road is not closed. It's still open when they're, when they're making these ice sculptures. It's crazy. Looks like a stained glass window. Yeah, it's a beautiful poster this year. I mean, look. That poster's Okay. But it's, it's nothing like the one this year. The one this year has taken it to a completely different level. Completely different level. Um, but yeah, I do encourage you all um, at, at some time. You know, it's most probably too late to go this year, apart from Mad Hatter. But, you know, there's people in Japan that have never been to the Sapporo um, Snow Festival before. You know, you've really got to. I was talking to a friend in Japan the other day, and they've never been up there. It's like, why? Uh, you don't care what it would cost to get the poster to me. Yeah, no worries. Just remind me when I'm in uh, Japan there, uh, Mike, because I'll forget. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a very forgetful person. Uh, best to remind me near the end of my trip as well. I'm not going to get it on day one because uh, uh, I have, I have some, some plans for the first period. Um, uh, so yeah, it's best that I get it near the end because then they're not going to get damaged. You can get one printed somewhere. You, uh, in Australia, you can get them printed at Officeworks, just taking the PDF. Um, you can get it on glossy paper or, or whatever, which would actually be better. Um, you can a actually at uh, Officeworks or printers around the world, you can get them printed on metal. You can get them printed on glass if you've got the PDF, uh, on cups. Uh, whatever you like. So in, in a lot of ways, the PDF's uh, a good thing to have, he says. Yeah, no, exactly. But also, you've got to remember, as you would know, Dylan, uh, again, when I say that, you know, tourists complain about, you know, oh, Japan rips tourists off when we travel. No, 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 it's very, very cheap. For Japanese, it's very, very expensive to go around Japan, and they're all working. They work their ass off, so, you know, they don't really get much uh, free time. Uh, but, you know, I, I suppose there's an argument getting to Hokkaido, it is it's not harder, but it's, it's, you know, it's further and, you know, you can't get the Shinkansen there. Um, so you do have to make more of an effort to get up there. But it's worth it, you know. Um, last year, when I went there in February, I only did Sapporo. Sapporo City, that was it. Uh, this year, I'm only doing Sapporo City, that's it. Um, you know, the three weeks or whatever that I'm going to be there. When I go to mainland Japan, I never do three weeks in one place. I have to go here and here and here and here and here. So, Sapporo has so much to offer just for that one place that, you know, it's, it's just extraordinary. Have a good night, Sapporo Jay. I will see you next week, my friend. You be very good and uh, make sure big camera stays trading until I pick up my glasses. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm dying for my glasses. I want my glasses now, people. I want them now. I don't want them next week. I want them now. Man. Man. 
Um, but I also want to go to um, Otaru, was it? I want to go to Otaru this time as well. So I want to get to... Um, the idea as well is uh, North Korea just launched a missile uh, over Hokkaido again. Lovely. Nice. So you just got the warning on your phone. You know, cell phone alert. Bloody hell. You know, North Korea, I know it just does it just to be a pain in the ass, but one day, and you hope it won't happen, and thank God there's a lot of empty space in Hokkaido, but one day there's going to be a technical malfunction or something's going to go wrong, and and this smart-ass plan that they have of launching these, you know, something's going to go miserably wrong. It's just a friggin' pain. Uh, but you've heard it first, thanks to Sapporo J. Jeez, we, we break so much news. I tell you, everybody talks about the plane the day after. Then there was something else that they all talked about the day after. We're now telling you before anybody else, North Korea just launched a missile. Bloody North Korea. Seriously. Hmm. Yeah, start training about day four. Okay, oh, like Tokyo, you 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 could spend a lifetime there and not do it. So yeah, you you can do just a trip in Tokyo. But the the way I see it is, if I'm in Tokyo, I I can go here and I can go there and I can go there and I can go there. So that's why I do that. You know what I mean? Um, but with Sapporo, your your it's like being in a completely different country. It's like a country to itself. Um, but you, you will never get bored there. You, you will never run out of things to do and see and discover. And it's just amazing. It has a huge bang for its buck, massive bang for its buck. So, you know, last year I was there for a month. Not one day did I get bored or think, oh my God, there's nothing else to do. Or, you know, I've done this. Um, uh, to be fair, the snow festival does help. There's a lot going on with the snow festival, and you can't see the snow festival in one day. It's it's an impossibility. It's absolutely an impossibility. Um, and then when you add the ice festival in it as well, and then you add the theme park in it as well, and then you add the historical village of Hokkaido in it as well, and then you add the actual city and you, you like uh, uh, the 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 uh, national uh, shrine of Hokkaido and you know the chocolate factory and the, you know and the list goes on and on and on and on and on you, 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 you it just fills up time so quick you know the snow festival if, if you could go there every night and discover something new or see something new because they've got live bands they've got uh theater if, you, if you're into plays and all of this is free of course they've got the light displays they've got the food they've got the drinks uh they've got the competitions you know, they've got the big sculptures. You couldn't do the big sculptures and the little sculptures in one night. Uh, well, you could, but I don't think you'd in enjoy it as much. Um, you know, then you've got the other end near the Sapporo TV tower and you want to go up that to see this, to see all the lights and everything as well. And um, and then you've got the ice rink uh, you know, and you've got um, all the games down there as well. The uh, what, What's the one where they get the big cement things on the ice? And they, they slide them. What's that called? They've got that down there. And, you know, there's lots of things to do. Uh, archives of every poster. Yeah, but they're only, they're only uh, little thumbnail ones, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got the underground city. Because Sapporo's got the underground city. And then the above ground city. And the beer factory. Uh, and the factory outlets, they got factory outlets there if you like shopping. Oh my god, they got factory outlets. Boy, do they have factory outlets. I bought uh, in f the snow festival last year when I was there. Pauline uh, gave me some money for, yeah, curling, that was it. Um, so that you, you can play curling, anybody can play curling near the uh, Sapporo TV tower. Um, and then there's other games as well they've got down there as well. Uh, or, you know, all snow or ice orientated. Uh, we, when I was there last year for my birthday, because I'm always in Sapporo for my birthday, um, 
on the way to the beer factory right next door to it, there's a massive shopping center and it's like a factory outlet and it is a real factory outlet, like the prices are so cheap. And um, I can't remember what Pauline gave me, 10 bucks or something, I don't know, something like that. Uh, most probably more, but I only spent 10 bucks there. I got like two brand new jumpers, uh, one woolen jumper and one like pullover hoodie jumper thing, $5 each, you know, um, yeah. They're right next door to the beer factory, the factory outlets, right next door in the in the big shopping center. So if you go on Google Maps and you find the Sapporo Beer Factory, you'll see a massive shopping center complex next to it. Massive shopping center complex. Um, it it's it's there. Um, they they got normal shops in there as well, but they also have the factory outlets in there as well. So, yeah. You know, but there's other places I haven't seen in Sapporo City yet as well. I'm going to go to the other factory, which is a shopping center, which I never knew existed. Um, I'll start to explore the other side of the city, which I've never explored. You've got the mountain, of course, and uh, you've got the uh, old Olympic site out there as well, um, where you can do ski jumping and all sorts of stuff. Um, then you've got the giant Buddha and, you know, they, they, there's so much to do, absolutely so much to do. You'd never get bored. Never, never, never get bored. Maybe that's why they have so much going on there because they realize Japanese people don't travel and they have to add all this stuff to keep them interested and morale up and, you know, it, 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 it. and then you come back to Australia and it's just boring, boring as all hell. Absolutely boring as all hell. Um, so, yeah. And there's museums everywhere. Unfortunately, I've never been to the science, uh, the the science and planetarium museum in Sapporo. Never even thought about it. But this year it's closed because they're renovating it. Unfortunately. Mark, did you like the beaches in Japan? A friend of mine that worked there for three months said she didn't like the beaches. They were ugly. It depends what beaches you go to. For a start, I've done a couple of beaches in Japan and I've thoroughly enjoyed them. Uh, but there's other beaches as well, which are like volcanic uh, sand, for example. Um, so it, it's black sand, and you might go, oh, this is an ugly beach. Why is it black sand? And it's because it's volcanic, and you're supposed to be buried in it because it's good for you. But, you know, um, Rabbit Island, extraordinary beaches. Uh, you know, um, oh, my God, I've been to so many beaches, I can't even think of them at the moment, <laughs> which is so bad. Um no, the beaches are the the beaches are lovely um, that I've been to anyway. Yeah, but but some areas the they might think they're ugly because the sand is black, but that's that's volcanic sand, whatever you want to call it. But no, I love the beaches. The water is crystal clear at the beaches you go to. Um, yeah, no, no, not so. But, you know, she, she might have said an ugly beach because maybe she's only done the city. Maybe she's only done the tourist areas. I don't know. Um, I haven't really done the beaches in, you know, uh, the big cities because I've, I've just never needed to. I've been doing other things. So when I go to the beach, I'm usually in a, a country town or an island. You know, you can't say any beach on any island is ugly. That's, it's just impossible. I think every island no matter where it is on the planet Earth, has spectacular beaches, <laughs> you know. And uh, Japan has over 4,000 islands. So there's over 4,000 extraordinary beaches in Japan. Um, but, you, you know, you've got to go to them. You've got to go to them. Uh, they don't come to you. You've got to go to them. So, you know, um, again, if you're just doing Osaka, you're most probably not going to find a beautiful beach. Uh, you're not going to find anything apart from a bit of grimy river, I suppose. Uh, you know, when you're in Tokyo, uh, I don't know, Yokohama. I think Yokohama's got some decent beaches, uh, I'm guessing. Um, Hakodate. Hakodate had a beautiful beach. Uh, well, Hakodate. Sorry, people always tell me off when I pronounce it wrong. I pronounce it the Australian way. Akadate has a lovely beach. Um, uh, Aomori, they got a nice beach. We we were at Aomori uh, last year. Fourteen cities in fourteen days. That's got a nice beach. 
Um, the the shoreline of Hokkaido has uh, beautiful beaches. Um, yeah, so it, it just depends where you go. I mean, it's just like people go, you know, in Australia, they're beautiful beaches. Well, no, in, in, in Victoria, in Melbourne, the beaches are disgusting. You know, you, 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 in fact, cannot go in the water. They're so polluted. You're not allowed in the water. They're disgusting. So you go to Queensland for the beaches. You go to uh, Perth for the beaches. You know what I mean? So you just got to pick the area. Yeah, especially when there's a tsunami, Dylan. When there's a tsunami, the waves are killer. Man. No, there's, uh, there's a lot of unspoiled coastline in Japan and beautiful beaches out there, rest assured. And again, they've got over 4,000 islands. I think they've even upgraded now to bloody nearly 10,000 islands. I don't know. There's a lot of friggin' islands in Japan. And every single one of those islands, every single one of them, because they're pretty much untouched. Um, all have magnificent beaches, you know, beautiful beaches. I don't think, I don't think Japan would allow there to be an ugly beach. But in saying that, you know, some beaches, uh, around the Fukushima area and that, you might go, they're ugly beaches because there's tsunami walls on them. Not all beaches have tsunami walls, but you know. <clears throat> around Fukushima, uh, what area did I go to? I went to one area and there was a big, massive, bloody tsunami wall. So when you were on the beach, it kind of felt a little less comfortable because when you're on a beach, you like to look at the water, you like to look at the beautiful sand, you like to look at the nature or whatever's behind you. But you felt somewhat trapped because you had the water, you had the beautiful sand, you had the cement wall. Do you know what I mean? And the cement, the cement wall was a bit of a, <clears throat> a killer for that. Went to the beaches in Queensland; they're awesome. Yeah, so you know, but if you went, if you went to Melbourne, the beaches would have been shit. So I said, just like Japan, you know, you, uh, if you're going to um, a beach in Japan, uh, pick an area. You know, pick your area, pick your location, 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 location. Um, you know, I, I would say nobody could argue the fact that the beaches on Rabbit Island aren't beautiful. Beautiful water, uh, beautiful sand, beautiful scenery, uh, looking out into the archipelago of all these beautiful islands, uh, while wild rabbits are sitting on your knee and you're stroking the, the, the rabbits, and that's not a euthanism. <laughs> you know, so... Um, I'm sitting on the beach stroking my rabbit. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, it's, I think it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet Earth, if not the most beautiful place on the planet Earth. But, of course, where you get tourists, you're always going to get something that is not as good. That's why I say about Osaka. There's nothing physically wrong with Osaka, but it's got that tourist lived-in look about it. Do you know what I'm saying? And... You know, that's what I mean. It's just like, it's a bit, it's a bit, you know. Mm. Um, what have we got? Three minutes to go and then I have to go. So, because uh, the news is coming on and I get to hear who's been murdered in Melbourne today. Because mm. it will be. Cindy, uh, Cindy's Beach. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you meant beach. Cindy's Beach is what's well, good too. Lots of nude beaches in Australia, by the way. If you like to get your kit off, if you like to be nude, lots of nude beaches in Australia. Uh, yes, good night, Mike. Good night. And uh, final drinks. Anybody want to say anything? You've got two and a half minutes. Before I, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I know there will be somebody dead in Melbourne. That's what the news will be about. Russell, my friend, it's always good to speak to you, my friend. And Russell is on the Facebook page. So why not join the Facebook page if you want to know more about Sapporo and going to Sapporo for uh, Christmas. It's going to be 
a beautiful it's going to be stunning there absolutely stunning um poor bella she hasn't gone for a walk she's going to hate me but uh i am not feeling great so i'm going to go watch the news see who died eat leftover food and hopefully watch the tennis before falling asleep and feeling better hopefully tomorrow at which point it will be exactly one week to go until i'm out of this rotten place and back into the country that i love so very very much <sighs> Wherever you are in this big, wide, wonderful world, have a good morning, afternoon, evening, or night. We will see you again soon on the Within Japan YouTube channel. Bye.